9-9 deadlock, and right now the home court teams have won eight out of the last nine, and that's uh, a pretty good percent. As a matter of fact, the only team to win on the road since we talked to you last week was Michigan in that four-point win last weekend out in Iowa City. So overall, the home court 17-10 and 10, coming into another week of Big Ten basketball. As always, our Hoosier capsule will kind of map this one out for you tonight as Purdue and Indiana battle for the 147th time dating back to 1901. Kit Klingelhofer will be joining me, and we'll be back in the Assembly Hall with more on the pregame show. So stand by, pull up a chair, and tighten the seatbelt. We got a dandy for you. We're back right after these messages. More people buy their new cars at Eastgate Chrysler than at any other Chrysler Plymouth dealership in the state of Indiana, Kentucky, or even Ohio. We also sell more Chryslers in Plymouth than any dealership in these states. Why do we sell so many cars? We've learned you don't become number one at selling automobiles by charging people too much money. So we sell for less and we become number one. You'll make your best buy at Eastgate Chrysler Plymouth. Just 500 North Shaler, Indianapolis. Marvin, please get out of my commercials. Cambridge Inn Cafeteria serves you delicious home-cooked food at affordable prices. Now through Sunday, we're featuring our all-day special of turkey and dressing, which includes your choice of salad, hot vegetable or potato, hot dinner roll and beverage, all for only $3.49. The entire family will enjoy a variety of freshly prepared food at Cambridge Inn Cafeteria. Cambridge Inn, the taste that brings you home. Mickey Thompson present the Off-Road Championship Grand Prix. Saturday night, January 25th at the Hoosier Dome. See the Trick Factory Grand National Sport Truck. The Wild 3 and 4 Wheel Pro ATV. The Unlimited's Open Wheel Racing Excite. The all-new Ultra Stock Funny Car. The Wildest Show on Wheels. It's all great family entertainment for men, women, and children. Indoors with a money-back guarantee. Meet the drivers at a 5.30 autograph session. Racing fires off at 7. Tickets at all Ticketmaster locations and the Hoosier Dome. More and more people are finding quality water with a Culligan drinking water system. So maybe today you call it water, but tomorrow... Culligan! Cool, clear Culligan. Hey, Culligan man. As a special new customer rental offer, you can rent a Culligan with the first month's rental free. Well, the fans are starting to come into the assembly hall. We expect a dandy basketball game here tonight at Kick Lingelhofer as we renew an old rivalry with the Team Northwest of Bloomington, about 110 miles. I tell you, if we play this game on paper, it's going to go right down to the buzzer. Well, a lot of the teams are very much alike, Joe. They're very much alike in size. They're very much alike as far as newcomers helping them. The style of ball is a little different this year. Obviously, a crucial game because if Purdue wins tonight, they move into sole possession of first place with Michigan taking the night off. And, of course, a big game for Indiana because we can't afford any more home losses. Well, too, it, it depends a lot on the physical condition of a couple of players, too, namely Darrell Thomas, who had a gutty effort against Ohio State, and Stu Robinson. Well, unfortunately, Darrell has not quite as progressed maybe as much as we hoped he would, Joe. His ankle is still bothering some. Stu's a little better. If Darrell can give us the kind of effort he gave, gave us against Ohio State, as you said, a very gutty performance. Hopefully he can play the same kind of basketball he played against Ohio State because I'm not sure we could have beat Ohio State without Darrell Thomas. Let's take a couple of looks now at the capsule as we glance at this one on paper tonight. Well, of course, Joe, Indiana right now with 11-4 and four overall record, 3-2 and two in the Big Ten. We're tied for third now in the Big Ten with Iowa and Ohio State. Uh, two games behind the loss, or one game behind the loss column, of course, Michigan and Purdue. Offensive average, 77 points a game. Defensive average, 65 Field goal percentage, now third in the nation, Joe, at 56.4. Only North Carolina and Georgia Tech were ahead of Indiana in field goal percentage in the country. Free throw percentage, about 73%. You know, if you want to look at it a little bit different, though, Indiana and Purdue rank among the Big Ten uh, leaders as far as opposing field goal percentage goes. Purdue is only allowing opponents to shoot 42% from the field. Indiana allowing about 45%. So that's a real key statistic. I think that the team that does the best job defensively is going to win this game. From a rebound standpoint, the Hoosiers are a little bit up on the season, 30, almost 32 a game at the, to 30 for the opponents. Rick Calloway still leads her at 5.3, as you mentioned, Daryl Thomas. Eight rebounds against Ohio State, and again, a crucial area because 
with guys like Mitchell. Purdue has done a very good job rebounding this year. And our turnovers, 14.3 a game right now, and our opponents, 15.2. Well, I tell you what, Purdue has certainly played uh, the basketball fortunes well this year. And I tell you, they've lost to the who's who of college basketball, North Carolina, Louisville, and Michigan. We look at the ball club, and we find a, a quicker pace, Gene Katie Basketball Club. They're averaging a nearly 79 points a ball game, giving up 67. Oh, this is a good shooting basketball team, averaging 51 and a half. All five of their starters, over 50% from the free throw line. The Gaddis, uh, 84%. Lewis, 81%. And an interesting statistic, Todd Mitchell has been to the line 133 times. He's hitting about 78%. So their front liner gets to the line about seven trips uh, each ball game. So keep your eyes peeled for that. A good rebounding team. Mitchell averages about uh, eight rebounds a contest. And I tell you what, it has been exciting, Kit, when Gene and Bob have been going head-to-head -head since 81. Well, there's no question about that, Joe. And these teams come at each other hard. Game in, game out. It doesn't make a difference where the game's played. You could play it in Nome, Alaska, and the teams would go at each other. You know, I don't think there are two teams in the Big Ten that play any harder game in and game out to what Indiana and Purdue do. It's certainly a credit to both coaches, and this one could very well come right down to the wire. All right, it's a big basketball game because Indiana playing them one at a time after starting off 0-2. And, and we talked a little about Purdue's balance. Well, it's a, a key that Bob Knight will talk about. Balance tonight offensively and another fine job defensively as we check in with Coach Bob Knight. The last three games we have not particularly played uh, as we would really uh, want to play and as I think we would have played had uh, injuries not taken place. Darrell did an outstanding job in the game a week ago with Ohio State. I'm not sure that, that he could have done this a year ago. We talk a lot about uh, mental toughness and about the mental being to the physical as four is to one and I think Darrell has made great strides in that regard and he played at, at considerably less than full strength in the Ohio State game and yet scored 15 points and got eight rebounds yet we weren't able to move as smoothly in our offense as we would like we have probably in these last two games for sure placed too much of a burden on Steve Alford's shoulders offensively now I think in in our two games this weekend and I'm really going to talk a little bit about what we have to do in both games because uh, tonight's game is obviously a, a Channel 4 televised game. Uh, Saturday's game is part of the Big Ten uh, TV package that most of you people will undoubtedly be watching that game too. So talk a little bit about our preparation for both games. What we do in a situation where we're playing Thursday night and Saturday afternoon is try to gear our preparation uh, to the first ball game completely. Yet keeping in mind those things we have to do on Saturday. Now, there will be a lot of things that will be similar for us in both games. First of all, I mentioned the burden that we've placed on Steve. One of the things that you want to look for from our standpoint offensively, both tonight and Saturday, will be scoring from other areas. Now, when we played Northwestern, went pretty well for us at Northwestern. We scored uh, 102 points at Northwestern. And that total uh, consisted uh, of 20 from Callaway, 19 from Alford, 18 from Harris, 15 from Morgan, and 14 from Robinson. Now, we went to Wisconsin, and we scored a total of 80. And 38 of those were from Alford. Now, what you want to look for from our standpoint this weekend to determine how efficiently and effectively we're operating is something that lends itself more toward a variety in scoring, balanced scoring, uh, attacks from different spots, more people involved. In the Ohio State game, we scored uh, 76, 69 points in the Ohio State game, and Steve had 32 of those. We got 15 from Darrell and 14 from Ricky in that ball game. But we still need some more scoring. We need uh, a little bit better dispersal of scoring so people cannot look and concentrate so much on Steve. This is trying to break away from our offensive play of a year ago, where teams really worked to, to jam blop up inside and then played Steve just as tough as was possible on the perimeter. So I think offensively, uh, what we've got to do is have a uh, variety of points to score from. We've got we've to work to get the ball in different spots where we can score. Uh, and we've got to have scoring from 
from all of our people uh, on the court. Uh, we're going to be playing against different uh, defenses. The game tonight will involve our recognizing and playing against probably as many as a half a dozen different defenses. Saturday's game could involve three or four. So one of the things we have to be able to do is go from one defense to another within the matter of two or three possessions and effectively handle the ball and move people against that defense. Each defense that a team can play against you takes something away from you, but it also gives you something. It may take a little bit of C away from us and give us a little bit more of A, and we've got to be able to capitalize on going to A and not worry so much about the defense being overloaded towards C. So offensively, we're going to have to recognize defenses and handle different defenses, all the way from full court pressure to a defense that, that may work very hard against Steve on the perimeter and try and jam up the inside part of our offense. Defensively, uh, both games will be somewhat similar for us in that we have got to do a good job of containing the area 15 or 16 feet from the basket. If we can play that area, play it well, and make it tough for people to uh, score easily against us or often against us in that area, then defensively we'll be in pretty good shape uh, in these two ball games. If not, I don't think that in either game we can overcome really being beaten in the 15 to 16 foot area. Those are the things to look for, not only in tonight's game, but the similarity of the, the personnel on both teams is such that what you look for in tonight's game uh, will be the same kinds of things that you'll be looking for in Saturday's game. International terrorists playing a game of death. If you do not help me, you may have on your hands the blood of a great many innocent Americans. 222,000 darts in the kill zone for 80,000 people. Robert Shaw, Bruce Dern, Marta Keller. My God, here it comes. Signal, red alert. Get the president out of the stadium. No one can stop Black Sunday. Friday's 8 o'clock movie on WTTV Channel 4. The Clark Bobcat Skid Steer Loader. It's the versatile friend of the contractor. A Bobcat can load a truck, break concrete, landscape, dig deep, trench fast, backfill, move pellets. A Bobcat can handle these jobs and more. Bright Equipment, 2935 Bluff Road, Indianapolis, 787-2201. Everyone is getting up and going to Richmond, Indiana to save thousands of dollars now during Tom Raper's 18th annual camper show. Gigantic savings on every RV at the largest dealer camper show in the Midwest inside the beautiful heated Richmond Square Mall, Richmond, Indiana. I-70 to exit 156 A, Route 40 West, two miles, open 10 to 9, Sunday noon to 6. Come on over now to Tom Raper's camper show, Richmond, Indiana. Admissions free, big discounts during show. Did you say fish fillets that really look like fish fillets instead of little squares? Sounds good to me. Did you say kitchen bread and light and crunchy golden hunks of two fish fillets? Sounds good to me. Did I hear sitting on a natural brain bun two fillets lip smacking fun? That's just the way it ought to be. Long John Silver. It's new. The double fillet fish fish sandwich. Sounds good to me. You know, one thing Hoosier fans can bank on later tonight, that this man's basketball team will be playing as hard at the 40-minute mark as they did when the ball was uh, tipped up. And Gene Candy, uh, interesting contest, but uh, we tip uh, our cap here on the tip-off show to your basketball club. Uh, young kids that certainly are growing up quick. Yes, uh, thank you for the compliment, because we try to play hard, and I think that's a key to really having a great season if you can get your players to do it for 40 minutes. And a lot of times we don't do it, but we try to. You know, Gene, you always talked about getting good character people, good quality people, and that's been an earmark of your program. Yes, we try to get, uh, we think, young men that will fit into what we believe in, and that takes a lot of hard work and, 
and a lot of hours of sometimes of discipline that some young men don't want to do, so you better be of a first-class character. You're not going to survive it. You know, there they a lot of talk about similarities, you know, the statistics on paper and what have you, but, you know, I think combined, we got about 25 kids that just love to play the game of basketball. I hope so, because that's the type of people we recruit. I like, uh, when I was a young man, I really liked to play, and I think that that's what we look for in a player, that if he's interested in not necessarily just basketball, but sports in general sometimes. So it's important to understand the game and uh, study it, and we like players that do that, and we have some that do that. Gene, stats, uh, stat sheets don't win basketball games. Players do. But what's really pleased you about your ball club this year offensively? Well, they've been fun to coach. They've been uh, a hard-working group, and they've tried to do what we want done. They've worked uh, hard to improve their own skills, and they're just one of those teams that you don't get very often where everybody works together. They enjoy each other off the court, and that's hard to find. So uh, they've been fun, and, they, and they've been enthusiastic, and uh, they're pretty young, but every day they're getting older. I'm, I'm afraid tonight they might get uh, close to being at that old age, so it's going to be an interesting contest. You know, if they had to, Big Ten had to give out an improved player award at each school, I think Scott, uh, or Todd Mitchell, rather, would be He's certainly a candidate. Uh, he has really played some basketball. He's come a long ways. I think the Taiwan trip helped him a lot this summer. And, uh, of course, Winston Morgan has improved a lot, too. So we've got similarities there. What about Melvin McCants and the battle inside tonight? Well, that's going to be a, a, a very key one, I believe, because uh, uh, Thomas can come through and play. And uh, if Melvin can stay with him and be as strong as he has been in the past, so that could be a very key matchup. What about your defense overall, Gene? You're holding opponents under 50% from the field into the 40s. Ditto for Indiana. you got to be pleased about your D. It's been an improvement over last year because we had small guards last year. When you got bigger guards, sometimes you can match up and stop the other people's guards at a better tempo. So uh, it's a situation where we have a stronger team at, at all positions, and we just feel like that uh, we're able to match up with people a lot better and not get burned in some situations. You know, and looking at your basketball club like we have this year, uh, you got role players, you have a good bench, and you need the bench to win in the Big Ten. Well, that's a key in our philosophy. We have a young man that's leading in assists, and Matt Gaddis. We have one leading in steals in uh, Doug Lee and one leading block shots, Everett Stevens, and then, of course, Todd Mitchell's leading us in rebounding, and then uh, uh, Troy Lewis is our scorer. So everybody has a role to play, and they're doing a good job of that, and Melvin's doing a good job neutralizing other team center, and that's been a big part, too. You worry about, uh, you talk about tempo. You know, people say, well, these teams get up and down the court now because they're a little quicker, uh, they're a little smaller than past teams, but uh, is tempo a big key tonight, Gene? I think so. I look for a high-scoring affair. I may be wrong. We've had a couple of low-scoring ones last year, but neither one of us were very good offensively last year. We had good kids that played hard, both of us, but I felt like that uh, we just couldn't get the offensive things going like we wanted, and, and that's very similar this year. I hope it's similar. It may not be when the game gets started. Do you put all your eggs defensively in one basket? I know somebody asked you that earlier in the week about Steve Alford defensing him, but uh, Indiana can hurt you, you know, at other positions now. Have great balance, and I uh, hope that we're the same way because I don't think you can just... Uh, say, do a good job on Steve and win because they've got four other people and really five or six that can come in and hurt you. All right, Gene Cady, the head basketball coach of the Purdue Boilermakers in the hall. It's going to be noisy in here. Always an interesting basketball game, and it will for the next 40 minutes. And as diversified and as solid as uh, Gene's basketball team is, we can say the same for Purdue University. Let's take a closer look. Purdue University students are driven by a desire to succeed. The annual Grand Prix go-kart race is just one activity in which students compete to come out on top while still having a good time. Other arenas in which Purdue students can excel include the classroom and laboratory. Here students challenge their intellects and perfect their academic skills. Those who enjoy athletic contests compete through intramural sports as well as on the intercollegiate level. Others seek perfection through creative expression and musical performance. And perhaps the most unusual event is a Rube Goldberg engineering contest in which students build machines to make the simplest task as complicated as possible. All these activities are part of a unique Purdue experience, which helps graduates achieve excellence in their careers and fulfillment in their lives. Purdue University, touching tomorrow, today. Usual. You know, one thing that can be said about last Wednesday night's game with Ohio State, the Hoosiers scored first and never trailed. And another item we can add, Steve Alford certainly didn't cool off from his 38-point effort against Wisconsin. After early ties at 2-4-6, and six, Steve puts the Hoosiers ahead to stay at 9-6 on this double pump from the baseline. 
The play, by the way, winds up a three-pointer. Indiana's ahead early. Daryl Thomas returned to the lineup last week. Here, a nice move around Brad Sellers inside for the layup. 13 to 10, Indiana. Daryl played the entire first half against OSU with eight points and six boards. Andre Harris hits here, about a 16-footer. Indiana's advantage five at 17-12. Then Andre hits the offensive board, misses a shot, but follows. And the end result, a deuce. And Indiana's ahead by seven, 19 to 12. The Hoosiers took their biggest lead of the first half at 27-15 with seven and a half to play. Here, Alford finds Thomas. Darrell, the easy lay-in. The Hoosiers squandered the lead some in that first half. As a matter of fact, Curtis Wilson, who played only 11 minutes, scored seven points right here. A jumper from 22. And all of a sudden, it's 35-30 heading into the final two minutes. But Alford gives IU a nine-point cushion at half. Todd Meyer gets credit for an assist. Alford, let's fly. And how about this momentum builder heading into the dressing room? Let's watch. 39-30 at half. Hoosiers hit 57%. And while that was happening, played it tough at the other end. Ohio State held under 38% from the field. And Alford, another exceptional half of basketball, 17 points. Things get extremely tight later on in the second half. As a matter of fact, Ohio State trimmed IU's lead to 47-44 the first five minutes of the second half. Clarence McGee, a little turnaround here. Thomas, who was obviously playing in pain, didn't play like pain bothered him. Callaway, the assist. Darrell, a lay-in. It's 50-44 IU. Callaway takes a win Morgan feed, and it's Indiana by eight, 52-44. Thomas, though, picks up two quick personals. To the bench, he goes with four. And Ohio State takes advantage. Sellers with two of his second half 20. He had 29 in the game, and it's 56-50. Harris fouls out. And Sellers makes it 58-54 on this lay-in. We have six minutes and 17 seconds to play. And a dandy on our hands. Sellers again. 60-56 IU. 5.41 to play. But the Hoosiers hang tough. Alford would have gotten three on this one, huh? Measure it. What? 25 feet plus? 62-56. Inside now, two and a half minutes. Sellers, another turnaround. Swish. So look out. It's 62-60 Indiana. But Alford comes down. And watch this move inside. Some chips down player, huh? 64-60-209 to play. But Kip Lomax keeps the pressure on. Swish. 64-62, a minute 50 to play. But the Hoosiers milk the clock on possessions. Rick Calloway cashes in on two. Very big free throws with 32 seconds to play. And Indiana keeps its head above water. Alford added to the margin of victory. Three of four from the line the final 15 seconds. And Indiana comes away. 69-66 winners. Alford with 32 points has scored 89 the last three, shooting over 62% from the field. And Thomas finished with 15, Callaway 14. The Hoosiers held Ohio State defensively to 42% shooting. And we'll have to come up with that kind of effort again tonight. It doesn't get any easier. Purdue, a 51.5% shooting ball club. Co-leaders after six in the conference. Hoosiers will try and bump them off tonight. It'll be interesting, as always. You see the guy in the white shirt? Well, sometimes he and I do TV commercials. He's won practically every title in his weight division, including the bronze medal in the Olympics and light heavyweight championship of the world twice. On February 9th, right here in Indianapolis, he's going to try to become the first man in history to win the light heavyweight title for the third time. I'm Vince Ganey for Eastgate Chrysler Plymouth. Please join us in wishing him the very best in his endeavor. He's my TV partner, and he's truly a champion. He's Marvin Johnson. In the land of Dairy Queen, it's the Blizzard, an original Dairy Queen treat. So rich, so thick, you got to spoon it up. Now get your Blizzard made with a heat bar, cookies, fruit or nuts. The choice is yours. Spoon up some excitement. The Blizzard at Dairy Queen, an American original. We treat you right. Daddy's got a new job. Maybe he and Mom forgot what childhood means. I'll never meet Mickey Mouse. 
maybe we'll go. Hey, little girl, do you think that no one cares about uh, your dreams? Uh, Daddy, working. That's what you think. These are times you'll always treasure. Now your dreams come true. Sharing all the fun together. It's Mickey. Together at Disney. Mm -hmm. If you're employed by any of the schools in this area, you and your family are eligible to become members of Teachers Credit Union. Our members enjoy more and better service than they could find anywhere else. As a member, you are an owner and share the dividends. Join the largest credit union in Indiana. We're secure with insured savings. Well, the fans are ready. I hope you're ready. Stay tuned for basketball. Chuck Marlowe, John Laskowski, Joe Smith saying so long from the Assembly Hall. Indiana University tip-off. Brought to you in part by Eastgate Chrysler Plymouth, Midwest's largest retailer of Chrysler's and Plymouth's. This Sunday is the biggest day of the year for Fred Finster because this Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday. And Fred is ready to play because he took advantage of the terrific savings at Highland's week-long Super Bowl sale. Like this countertop microwave oven with automatic timer, just $88. So come to Highland's Super Bowl sale now through Saturday and get the best seat in the house. Oh, good. That finished just in time. Let's kick off. Today's movie presentation, Heidi. Before you go looking for a store and end up going in circles, bank on the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages to get the tips that are so on target. When you take a shopping trip, you'll be sitting pretty, right on top of things. So unless you've got money to burn and time to waste, wake up. Before you open the door, open the book, the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. If you like your hamburgers 100% all-American, hot and beefy, clap your hands. Big Mac. Quarter pounder. McGee, 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 LT. Big and beefy, you can eat your fill. We got it hand warming, hot off the grill. Hand warming ham hamburger time. It's a good time. Indiana National, on the subject of money. By itself, it's only paper. But in the right hands, it becomes a lot more valuable. Indiana National can help you do so much more with your money. Because we don't see money as paper. To us, it's something that gets you where you want to go. Indiana National, more for your money. Bloomington invites you to break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away to Bloomington. WTTV. For the good times.
We're live from Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where tonight an important matchup in Big Ten Conference play puts the 5 and 1 Purdue Boilermakers co conference leaders against the 3 and 2 Hurry and Hoosiers. Along, buddy, Chuck Marlowe, along with John Laskowski. And, John, for a long time since I can remember, this is the first time these two teams have come in as evenly matched statistically. It really is. Purdue's got a lot at stake. They're trying to take over the Big Ten lead. Indiana's got Daryl Thomas back in the lineup, but Chuck, this is Indiana and Purdue. It's been a great rivalry through the years. A lot of games I've played in, and I think everybody's here is looking for a great game today. The swing of this game could rest in just the flip of a coin. It's that close, and we'll be back to bring you the starting lineups in just a minute. The care and concern your Hooks prescription receives doesn't end with dispensing the prescribed medication. Even the container in which your prescription is placed is important. When needed, Hooks prescriptions go into special moisture and light-resistant containers to assure full potency. And child-resistant caps are provided unless you specify otherwise. Packaged and labeled just for you. From Hooks. We like to see you. Hey, excuse me? Got a minute? Uh, no, not really. I just got home from work. Oh. Yeah, I got a house to clean, dinner to cook, and two kids to take to piano lessons. You sound like a very busy person. I, I am. I hope you've got a few minutes to talk to your Farm Bureau insurance agent about life insurance. Everybody needs it, including you. Look, I really don't have the time. Besides, nothing ever happens to me. Hey, no piano lessons. <clears throat> You're shaving with coal. Coal? I'm shaving with my electric razor. And it takes coal to produce that electricity. Never thought of it like that. Coal generates more than half the electricity in the United States. It takes coal to fix your breakfast, tune in, and turn on. In fact, on the average, every American uses three tons of coal each year. Amex Coal Company, powering your world. Behind this rugged game of football, there's a lot of sophisticated communications for the teams, the stadiums, and you. I'm Dick Enberg. You know, GTE supplies communications like these for Texas Stadium, the Pro Bowl in Hawaii, Tampa Stadium, and the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. For your quality communications, talk to the telecommunications consultant to Super Bowl XX. Talk to GTE. We respond. Purdue and Indiana began meeting in basketball back in 1901. The Boilers lead this series 88 to 58. Both games went to Purdue last year. 62-52 in West Lafayette and 72-63 here in Bloomington. But it's a new year and a new game. Good evening. Indiana University welcomes you to the Assembly Hall. Let's meet tonight's starting lineups. At one forward for Purdue, a 6'5 senior from Washington, Illinois, number 20, Doug Lee. For Indiana, at forward, a 6'6 freshman from Cincinnati, Callaway. At the other forward for Purdue, a 6'7 sophomore from Toledo, Ohio, number 33, Todd Mitchell. At the other forward for Indiana, a 6'6 junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 34, Andre Harris. At center for Purdue, a 6'9 freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 45, Melvin McCants. In the middle for Indiana, a 6'7 junior from Westchester, Illinois, number 24, Darrell Thomas. At one guard, a 6'1 senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 11, Mac Gattis. And for Indiana at guard, a 6'2 junior from Newcastle, Indiana, number 12, Steve Alford. The other starting guard for the Boilermakers, a 6'4 sophomore from Anderson, Indiana, number 23, Troy Lewis. Rounding out Indiana's starting lineup at guard, a 6'1 senior from Anderson, Indiana, number 22, Stu Robinson. The head coach for the Boilermakers, now in his sixth season in West Lafayette, Gene Cady. The head coach for the Hoosiers, now in his 15th season here in Bloomington, 
Bob Knight. Our colors this evening are being presented by the Army ROTC Color Guard under the command of Cadet Master Sergeant Dave Smith. With the IU Pep Band under the direction of Professor Steve Pratt and featured vocalist Greg Rumming of the Indiana University School of Music. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in they cooled to the night and our flag was still there for oh, sailors and stars spangled around the arena there are not too many vacant seats I look all the way up into the corners and uh, that's normally the area in which you do not see anyone here at Assembly Hall if there is to be a vacant seat and John we are probably at capacity right down to press row players on both teams really look forward to playing this ball game now this is one of the kind of games that the, the entire season as young as it is in conference play can hinge upon John Uh, we seem to have lost a little bit of communications uh, right here on the uh, uh, between John Laskowski and Joe Smith and me, but there are the matchups tonight, and I'll pick this up until uh, we have Laskowski back with us. Callaway, Mitchell, Harrison Lee, Thomas McCanson. It'll be interesting to see after the tip just what does happen. Early week speculation was, as you look at the officials, Phil Robinson, Gary Muncy is the referee, and Robinson and Bill Herzog are the umpires. Last time we saw this crew was in Wisconsin. All set to go. It's going to be Harris and Mitchell to tip it up. And the tip is controlled by Purdue. Goes into the hands of 45 McCants. McCants a freshman. This is Gaddis. And Alfred immediately takes him as Gaddis works it back out on top. 23 Lewis inside. And we have our first foul against Indiana as good inside play with a feed from the top Todd Mitchell will go to the line early to watch the matchups here Stu Robinson is on Troy Lewis Delray uh, Andre Harris is on Todd Mitchell Todd moves around the inside and is able to get the inside position Andre with the foul from behind Todd Mitchell 93 percent from the charity stripe in Big Ten play 79 percent over the season And the second is good. Purdue takes a 2-0 lead. Assembly Hall, and immediately the Boilermakers go into the press. Galloway will break it across the line, picked up by Lee. It's Gaddis, a man-to-man -man with Alford at the free throw line. Alford gets free. The shot is no good, out of bounds. Gary Muncy says Purdue. Purdue on the matchup goes with Gaddis against Alford. Purdue had success last year with Atkinson, a 6'5 player on uh, Alford. This year they're going with Gaddis. Look for Purdue to use a lot of different type of defenses over the course of today's ball game. Lee comes down to try to set a pick, does set a screen, the outside shot by 23. Troy Lewis is no good. And the loose ball put in by the freshman, Mel McCanns. Indiana with good position inside. Three players there. None of them could come up with the ball. McCanns with the layup. Purdue four, Indiana nothing, as Thomas goes to the glass. It's tipped out into the backcourt, picked up by Robinson. Robinson off the glass, good. 
The other matchup to watch inside is the freshman McCants against Daryl Thomas. Uh, Daryl's leg still a little swollen from that sprained ankle suffered about three weeks ago. Made a good move that time, but missed the shot. Purdue with a 2-0 lead, thanks to those free throws and a whistle. And we have a foul on the ball side of the floor called on Rick Calloway against Indiana. That is the second in the early going of this game, and we have yet to play 90 seconds. Purdue out under its own basket. Doug Lee is the trigger man or the inbounds man, and it comes into Mitchell and then back around on the top. Gaddis, a senior from Indianapolis Pike High School. One of the most experienced. They call five seconds. Phil Robinson making the out call as Gaddis just a little bit complacent working the ball across the top of the key. That's the first turnover against uh, Purdue, and turnovers can be very important in a game with the magnitude of this one. It will be. Both teams look a little shaky here at the start, a little nervous maybe. Each coach trying to settle them down. Callaway lays it off. Robinson will not shoot. A little bit too far out. Now more in position. This time Purdue adjusts well. Indiana looking for a back cut. Offer tries to shake Gaddis. Max stays right on him. A whistle. We have a foul of holding against Todd Mitchell. That's the first against Purdue. Todd Mitchell on Andre. Andre usually not used to that 25 foot getting the ball out there where a guard does. It makes a good smooth move there. It looks like one stat to watch Chuck will be the foul situation. Both these teams like to go with the starting unit, although Purdue will go to Everett Stevens and Kip Jones as a substitute. They go down to Thomas on the baseline. Oh, the ball just takes a roll right across the back of the rim. Here's Purdue with the upcourt move into the offensive area, off the glass and good. Max Gaddis. Gaddis, his first, 56%. Overall, good turnaround move by Daryl Thomas. Indiana will try to get that ball into Daryl. Now just two of five for Indiana, but Daryl's got the ball in position. He's wanted it, but that's the first time he's been able to convert. Todd Mitchell. Mitchell and Lee, two very strong board players. There's a good outside shot. That's one that you have to stop. Troy Lewis, the sophomore from Anderson, averaging 18.7 in Big Ten play. He's a great shooter. He's fifth in the league in scoring, and he came off a pick that time. Robinson got hung up, and Lewis with the shot. Harris with an air ball. Lee will bring it up. And now Purdue leading 8-4 with a chance to increase that lead to six. And there's a pick set low. Shot is no good. Rebound. As Mitchell's ball was down in the well and out. And here's Robinson. Alford. In and out. No good. Lee with the rebound. Blocked away by Callaway. We're into a running game. Callaway. No good. And a whistle. Thomas with the foul. Thomas came underneath Todd Mitchell for the loose ball, but a little bit late in getting there. And Thomas is called for the personal, his first. Right now, both teams pushing the ball up. Alford makes a good play here as Mitchell's concerned about the charge, enables Callaway to sneak from behind with the block. But Purdue wants to play that quick game. Indiana is not taking much time on their offense, usually shooting off that first pass. Purdue with a 6-3 to three rebound advantage early in the game. 8-4 is the score. Purdue leading by four. Gaddis looking underneath. Purdue setting its picks and screens well. This shot is no good. Off the rim, it's no good. Out into the hands. Robinson, right side. Wants to drive on Lewis, changes his mind. Watch the action. They overplay Harris on the ball. Harris turns away. Robinson to the baseline. And a foul. Backing in. It goes against Purdue's McCants. A lot of action under the basket. Now Robinson with a kind of push shot that time. McCants backs into Daryl Thomas. We have a timeout with 15.46 left first half. You are watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Indiana trails Purdue 8-4. to four. 
It's hard to save money, but I do it. So I deserve to have it count for more at a bank that will keep it safe under its wing. One that'll help it grow with high interest. And always keep a lookout for even more and better ways for me to save. I deserve American Fletcher. AFMB. More ways to save and earn more. I earn the savings advantage. You see Phil Robinson waiting for the teams to report back. It's going to be out of bounds underneath the Purdue basket. Indiana with the ball. Joe? Six to five in rebounds officially, Chuck. The first five minutes of the ball game. And interestingly enough, Stu Robinson has four of the five rebounds. So that front line is going to have to get to work here against Purdue because they've been banging away here in the early part of the ball game. Alford will send it in. Let's take a look. There's some interesting statistics. Indiana also third in the nation with that field goal percentage behind North Carolina and Georgia Tech. Turned around by Thomas is no good. Out of bounds, it'll be off the hand of Andre Harris and Purdue's ball. Indiana just two out of uh, 10 now from the field at 20%, so that field goal percentage we just showed you is coming down quickly. Lob inside to McCants, it won't go. Rebound to Harris. He banded the ball. It got to the glass before he could touch it, but he got the rebound. They really jammed down tight on Thomas. There's a good move to the base. It's no good. There's a foul before the slam dunk by Harris. And the foul is going against, I believe, Todd Mitchell, his second. Darrell Thomas for Indiana just goes right down to the block, and he's looking to get that lead pass. He puts his head down and makes a spin move. Mitchell comes over from the weak side. Look at Andre Harris with the rebound. That won't count. The foul was before the tip by Harris. Darrell's foot still sensitive. An interesting thing that happened there, John, is Darrell turned back to the basket after he had the ball, saw the opening, then put it down. A lot of players drive before they look. you got to be careful if Purdue has the weak side help there. You don't want to dribble right into him. So got to look to see where you're going, then put the ball down. Mac Gaddis down in the corner. This is Troy Lewis. Up to the line is Lee. No good. Rebound. Oh, and Thomas came down hard on the foot. Let's wait to see. He seems to be running it off. That left foot was his pivot foot that time, a little gingerly there, but did not travel. We are, what, no basket, Bill Herzog says, but the ball was in the air. The whistle, no, it's a foul. Here's Rick Calloway. The foul goes against Indiana. Indiana, the basket will count. Foul on Andre Harris, that'll be his second. So a rebounding foul, trying to fight for position. Andre not happy with himself. That's two quick fouls. Two on Andre now and two on Mitchell. Watch that foul situation. Herzog had made a lane violation motion with his hand, but there was a foul. It was against Harris. At the line, the shot is off the rim. No good, out of bounds. Indiana, as Todd Mitchell's shot hit a soft rim, but no one could come up with the handle. Doug Lee right there that time for Purdue. He averages 6.7 rebounds a game, uh, which is good for sixth in the league. And he's battling Rick Calloway right now. Neither team shooting well. Both are three out of 11 here in the first half. Alford with just one shot. Lays it off. Calloway, top of the key. That's down in the well and out. No good. The rebound to Lewis. Now Robinson is on Lewis. A little switch underneath. Lee outside, and it goes. Doug Lee averaging 11.7 Big Ten play, his first field goal. It's 10-8 Purdue. 13.53 left in the first half. A game that could mean the season to either team. Alford from the corner. When Indiana is able to get a pick for Alford to let him break out, he's very dangerous with that shot, but Gaddis has done a good job. That's only the second time Steve's been able to get the shot away. Indiana has been working all week with uh, isolations on Alford. They've been working box on one. What a block by Harris. 
He got caught behind the play and still recovered. Lee, corner. It's no good. Back out on top as McCants gets the loose ball. Purdue is physical enough to fight for their position on the offensive board. McCants puts it up. He's fouled by Thomas, his second. That will put freshman Melvin McCants at the line with two shots. Indiana getting into a tentative situation foul-wise. That was their fifth, but Harris has two and Thomas has two. Two of the front line, and very important. McCann 62% on the season, but 80% in conference play. Chicago Mount Carmel High School. He was voted preseason by the media as the newcomer of the year in the Big Ten. A couple injuries to produce the centers has moved Melvin right into the starting position and done an adequate job. Gantz has three points. Again, Purdue puts on the pressure. 11-10, the Boilermakers. As we near the 13-minute mark, Indiana across the line as Robinson sets it from the top right. Alford underneath it goes, backing in. Thomas off the rim. A lot of contact underneath, the loose ball off the leg, recovered by Indiana. Robinson drives, tipped up, no good. Bodies are all over the floor. Robinson gets it back, feeds Thomas. Bodies are all over the floor. Both teams really going after that ball, Chuck. Uh, at least five or six bodies laying around the ball. Never going in the basket, but Purdue unable to come up with it. Watch the action here. Great block by McCants as Thomas was falling away. McCants knocks the ball out of bounds to Indiana. Alford for the Hoosier. Up off the glass, it's good, and he's fouled. And I believe McCants picks up the personal. Gene Cady on the Purdue bench. That's a stop and go move that time as Alford has cleared out a side, and as Alford stops, McCants turns the other way, and then Steve picks up his dribble again, and is able to get the shot. New face in the lineup, number 21 is Everett Stevens, a sophomore from Evanston, Illinois. Went to Township High School. Here's Steve at the line, 88%. In Big Ten play, that will go down as he misses. Steve, concentration, off just a little bit this season. Early going, he'll get it in tow, though. Lee, Stevens, Indiana bench is up. Here's Lee up off the glass, no good. Rebound to Harris, the outlet to Callaway, and he'll slow it up as Purdue has Stevens and Lewis back quickly. Callaway. It goes, Andre Harris, no basket. That's a good call by Gary Munson. The ball was resting on the rim, and Muncie makes a good call. Callaway with the drive that time, and Harris has really been up on those boards today. Let's see if we can watch from under the basket. Yep. Well, that ball is away from the from rim. From that angle it is, yes. Well, the camera was the judge this time outside. Lewis's shot's no good. Harris skies again for the board. 12-11, Indiana. Had that basket counted, Indiana would be working on the five-point lead. It's in and out. Callaway, pump fakes, score! Right now, it's the rebounding by Indiana that's made a difference in the ball game, even without Harris uh, putting that one through. Indiana with 13 rebounds, Purdue with 11. Callaway with the step in basket. Alford commits the foul as Stevens got it a little bit in front of him. And we have a timeout with 11.21 remaining. We're watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. The Hoosiers 14, Purdue 11. It's like working in a jungle, trying to do business in today's communication environment. It's easy to get tangled up in technology analog, digital, voice, and data. 
Computers and people all trying to make contact at the same time. Indiana Bell can lead you out of this jungle. With digital line services for your voice and data needs. Civilize your business communications with digital transport services. Indiana Bell, helping you communicate. Now's the time to save on that new Nissan car or truck you've been wanting. See your Indiana Nissan dealer today and save hundreds during our 1986 tax sale. Plus, get closeout savings on all new Nissan trucks and selected cars. It's two great sales in, in one. one. You can save hundreds during our 86 tax sale. Plus, you can save even thousands with closeout prices on all trucks and selected cars. Get twice the savings now during our 86 tax sale plus at your Indiana Nissan dealer. 14-11, Indiana's led with four by Daryl Thomas and Rick Calloway, three from Steve Alford and two from Stu Robinson. That's an interesting statistic there. That uh, really explains the comeback by Indiana. Not a very good shooting percentage from an excellent shooting team. Looks like both teams are getting good shots too, Chuck, uh, but for some reason, both of them have a pretty good over 50% field goal percentage for the year, uh, but nobody really knocking that basket down today. Purdue to toss it in. Lee on the far side. It comes into Stevens. Everett Stevens, a 6'2 sophomore. Handles with Robinson on him. Down to Gaddis. Gaddis doubled over there and a whistle. And we have a blocking foul underneath. Called against Purdue. Doug Lee a little bit too obvious as he tried to set a pick. And his call for his first foul. Now Purdue, full court pressure. Let's watch to see if they release it when Indiana tries to come in, John. Full court pressure with Alford all the way down the floor under the Indiana basket, so he's letting the teammates, this time Andre Harris, bring it up. Uh, Callaway with a heady move. The basket is good, and a blocking foul called on Purdue's McCants. Stu Robinson with a big play as Purdue nearly comes up with the steal. Oh, that's Rick Calloway. Calloway steps right in and takes the ball all the way to the hoop. He gets up very high that time. McCants going down. Here's a good angle. You see Gaddis coming over. Yeah, and then McCants in front of him. looked like he moved that left foot over after uh, Calloway had left his feet. The third foul. So McCants comes out of the ball game. And 43, Jeff Arnold checks in for Gene Cady's team. Gene Cady has just called defensively for Purdue to use a diamond. Now a diamond would be a diamond and two, which probably means they're gonna put man on Alford and man on Callaway. Let's watch the next time Purdue comes down with McCants out of the lineup, although Arnold uh, is a pretty big kid also. Purdue doesn't lose anything in the height department. Gaddis, Indiana with a five-point lead, 16-11, as Lee tries to direct from the top of the key. Stevens from left side, it's good. Again, the pressure. Now they release it. Let's see what they put on. Apparently, they're going to have Lee on Callaway. Gaddis plays on Alter. Now they still appear to be in a man. It's like a man-to-man, -man, Chuck. Harris. Pump fake. Off the glass, no good. Out to Stevens. 16-13. Purdue looking patiently to try to stay on their offense. 43 is Jeff Arnold. Lee. Gaddis has it in the hole and back out. Loose ball. Alter will fire, and it won't go. I'll tell you, the lid's on both ends. Neither team really getting that basket. Uh, Arnold, six foot ten. You saw him on the rebound there. Three rebounds already. He's just checked into the ball game. That's Arnold. For Stevens. Stevens with his second field goal. It's 16-15. Stevens is not that good a shooter, 25%. Although, uh, He's only averaged three points in Big Ten play, but he's hit two for two. Hoosier lead is one and a foul. Doug Lee reaching in will be called for the personal, and that puts Purdue over the limit. 
Doug Lee, the two number 20s going right here. Lee, a very competitive player. He blocks the shot there. That puts Purdue over the limit. Be one and one now for Indiana with 9-11 left in the first half. But Callaway started out like a house of fire from the free throw line and then has cooled off and misses this, the front end of a one and one. He's averaging only 69% in conference play. Oh, down to the baseline, up and good. 32 is Herb Robinson. Gene Cady rates him as one of the strongest players off the bench he's had in quite some time. Robinson puts Purdue in front by one, 17-16, with 8.45 left in the first half. Galloway to Thomas. Thomas tries to get underneath, does get the ball to Harris. Good hands by Andre and right up to the glass quickly. Double team by Purdue that time. And Darrell noticed it, but had a tough time getting the ball through the two Purdue defenders. Andre was able to pick the ball up quickly and put it back in. Robinson top of the key, out of his range. He won't shoot from there. Cross court to Gattis all alone behind his screen and scores. <laughs> 18 Purdue. Robinson bounces inside, and there's a hold by Jeff Arnold that will send Darrell Thomas to the line. And reporting in for Indiana, replacing Andre Harris is number 21, Winston Morgan from Anderson, Indiana. Andre with two fouls. Indiana trying to keep him away from picking up that third foul here in the first half. Indiana offensively really trying to go inside low to Daryl Thomas, but Gaddis is really doing the job on Alford. Steve's taking him off picks, moving him around, uh, but cannot get open, so Indiana's got to look for somebody else for their scoring punch. Indiana, two out of five. Now two out of six from the free throw line in today's game. Well, the, the shooting from the field and from the line are horrible. And it's one of those kind of games, apparently both teams feeling the pressure of the importance of the contest. There's a back cut, knocked away into the hands of Robinson. Here comes Indiana, trailing by one. Alford behind a Callaway screen, can't shoot. Point guard is Morgan, inside Callaway. Foul, he'll go to the line. 32 is Robinson, Indiana is electing to take this ball in, feed it from the top, and try to penetrate and draw the inside motion from Purdue. Coach, talked, Coach Knight talked before the game that he wants to get a lot more scoring out of different players, not just let Alford go 38 or 32 in a ball game. And especially in a game when uh, the defense, this time Gaddis, is really hounding Steve Alford. So Indiana's got to look for that other scoring. Darrell Thomas inside, Rick Calloway on some drives, Stu Robinson on the step up jump shots as Purdue makes another substitution now. In the lineup, Herb Robinson comes out of the ball game. Troy Lewis, number 23, is back in. Okay, the second shot by Callaway is good. He has eight. Indiana leads by one. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Score, Hoosiers 20, Purdue 19. Give me a light. Go. Uh, Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Thank you. Because everything else is just a light. Hello. My dad's a great guy. He's entertaining. And he's got a terrific sense of humor. Mom says he takes care of me in ways I don't even know about. Life insurance from your Farm Bureau insurance agent. Another way to show how much you care. 7.35 remaining, Indiana 20 to 19 over Purdue, Joe. Seesaw battle, Chuck, now since Indiana had the 16 to 11 lead. Uh, about midway through, we've had five lead changes already. Back to Indiana, but well, you talked about that free throw shooting, Chuck. Three of seven for the Hoosiers. That's not gonna win many ba basketball That's, games. There's the field goal percentage, eight of 22 for Purdue, eight of 24 for Indiana. So, 
against a, a good shooting team, and either one of these clubs would be in trouble tonight. Stevens looking underneath. Here's Lewis, top of the key. Lewis will fire from the line, off the glass, no good. And position belongs to Alford with little effort on that one. Up to Morgan. Now they want to go inside. It's going to be a foul on Jeff Arnold. Picks up his second as they really try to overplay Daryl Thomas. Purdue doesn't want Thomas to get that ball inside. As I mentioned, Indiana is continually trying to move that ball inside. That's two now on Arnold, three on McCann. So foul uh, trouble will be a key thing to watch today. Uh, 7.09 left here in the first half. Both teams having problems. Daryl Thomas with two and Andre Harris with two fouls. That's the tenth foul against Purdue as Thomas rattles this one but gets it to drop. He has five. Indiana has been at the line in the one and one since the ten minute mark. Here's Darrell. You can see that heavily taped and splinted left ankle. He has nine points to lead both teams. He doesn't seem to be limping uh, quite as bad as he did in the second half against Ohio State. So it's still his ankle probably still feels good now. We'll have to watch him in the second half. Arnold to the top of the key tries to drop it off and back out for it is Gaddis. Lewis. A whistle and a block against Darrell Thomas. A costly move underneath by Thomas. That's his third foul. And now the Hoosiers have one in foul trouble. McCants for Purdue, Thomas for Indiana. See Coach Knight off the bench talking to Ron Felling, deciding whether they should put Harris in with two fouls, or this time they're going to go with Todd Meyer. Thomas comes out, Meyer, uh, first time in the ball game. So Indiana now in a little bit of foul trouble. They have their two front liners, Thomas and Harris, on the bench. Both teams are over the limit. Arnold uh, does not have any statistics at the line at Big Ted play. Well, we're waiting for him to get the ball. Happy birthday to Mary Alice Cox. Your daughter, Barbara, stopped by to see us and told us to wish you the best. Loose ball picked up on the errant shot by Arnold by Winston Morgan. Now with 6.41 remaining, Indiana with a three-point lead, and uh, Purdue has gone into a box and one, apparently. It's or like a 1-2-2 two, two zone. Or zone, because yes. Because Alford made the cut through, and nobody followed him. Callaway. I tell you, that's just shooting in a maze of trees. That was a tough shot. Neither team shooting well, as we showed, but... Uh, just good rhythm that time as he's falling away from the basket, a Purdue defender right in front of him and still able to make that shot. Arnold, and he has an easy two. Arnold with the height advantage, 6'7", so Todd Meyer, and 6'10", Jeff Arnold. He realized that the first time down the floor and made the jumper. Morgan lays it off and commits the foul. Winston just a little bit under control going down through the lane. We're going to have another substitution. Mitchell back in for Purdue after the free throw. He will be coming in for Herb Robinson with the play that time. It was uh, Doug Lee who went on the ball game, not Herb Robinson, as I mentioned before. Gene Cady with a very good record at Purdue. And Robinson, one of the few seniors that Gene Cady goes to him. He and Gaddis are the two seniors. And Robinson comes off the bench to do a good job. Herb played his high school ball at Eastern in Lansing, Michigan. It's 24-22, Indiana. Twenty-three as Robinson now will be replaced by Todd Mitchell. Robinson does his job. Mitchell back in with two fouls. A 6-7 sophomore wears number 33 from Toledo, Ohio. And Galloway throws it away. That's the third turnover by Indiana. Purdue with only two. Relatively mistake-free game. It has been, but that's why Purdue goes to that full-court pressure. They're looking to make a steal, or better yet, have you commit that turnover. And there is a bad pass from Callaway. Purdue out of bounds. Gaddis to Stevens. Mitchell back to Gaddis. Steps up. Pumps and scores. Gaddis with 
An important two for the Boilermakers. 25-24, five and a half minutes, first half. Now you're watching the box in one. You see Gaddis following uh, 12 Alford all over the floor. The other four players, too high and too low, play the zone. Morgan. Now Indiana realizes they set Alford up on top. And again, Gaddis following all over. Robinson off the glass. Loose ball, Purdue to Stevens. He'll fire. And undisciplined shot. A little bit too hasty. Robinson. Indiana again, you can hear. Crawling underneath. The officials making sure the action stays clean underneath. No, no. And it doesn't fall. Meyer gets the board. Back out. Robinson. Two points. Todd Meyer really not looking to score. He got the ball twice in that series of play, but didn't take the shot either time. Dumped back to Stu Robinson. Eight rebounds in the game now for Stu Robinson. Indiana 26-25. And into the hand. That's nine now for Robinson. Stu's not afraid to play underneath. That's one thing about Indiana guards. They are disciplined in their motion offense to also play disciplined defensive positions as well and go for the ball. There's a shot by Alford. Steve, as a matter of fact, averages three rebounds a game. Alford got a pick that time, and Gaddis got hung up. Steve makes the shot from the baseline. Now the lead has swung to a three-point Indiana advantage. Lewis and a foul reaching through. Will go against Robinson. And that will put Troy Lewis at the line. Another substitution, Doug Lee back in replacing Stevens. The first foul on Robinson. We have three minutes, 52 seconds remaining. Indiana with a 28-25 lead. Just before the game, I saw Dobby Grossman, great Indiana athlete of a few years back. Lewis with the free throw. Dobby and his wife, Sabrina, are the proud parents of a new baby boy, born a little bit premature, three pounds, 10 ounces. They named him Brooks. He's at Riley Hospital, and all of your Indiana fans, Dobby and Sabrina, and Brooks send you their best. Arnold over Meyer, who could not get the ball for Indiana. And Purdue has a chance to tie. Up off the glass and good, and credit that to a good move by Todd Mitchell. Jeff Arnold with five rebounds uh, in the ball game, and he'll Purdue to come up with that two points as Mitchell Posted up against Callaway. We're tied at 28. Morgan. Two. Thirty twenty-eight Indiana. Neither team relinquishing the pressure they've established throughout the first 17 minutes of this game. Morgan with a near steal. Overplayed, however, Purdue now with a mismatch. And there's two by Mac Gaddis as Steve Alford couldn't adjust. With 2.53 remaining, it's 30 all. Kind of a game we anticipated, John. It is. Both teams not shooting as well as they'd hoped, but the rough and tumble action that you get when Indiana plays Purdue. Hoosiers had no one on the board on that missed shot by Robinson. Gaddis to Lee. Lee lays it off. And that's a double. No, they say no double dribble. Keith Lee fires and scores. Thirty-two, thirty, Purdue. Callaway tries to find a lane to move in. It's back out to Robinson, Morgan. Now Callaway. Robinson, two points. On a great drive. Purdue's aware of the shot that Robinson can take. He faked it that time and made the drive. Made a difficult shot over Arnold. With 151 remaining, this crowd has not let up. Lee. And it's going to be a foul over the back called on Troy Lewis. His first. That will send Stu Robinson to the line to shoot one and one. 
Justin Robinson with uh, 10 rebounds. Lewis coming over the back that time, but you would never expect a guy like Robinson to come in and do the job on the boards. This time it gets a chance to go to the foul line. Coach Knight with Steve Alford diagramming how he wants Steve to play against this box and one last four or five times down the floor. His teammates have really picked Steve up, enabling uh, Indiana to get the score tied, but Indiana still looks for Alford to score no matter what defense the opposing team's playing. Robinson's first miss in Big Ten play from the line. He's seven of eight. Do with good ball motion. Gaddis back out to Lee. Doug looks underneath. Gives it back to Lewis. Here's Lee behind the screen. Todd Meyer and Steve Alford with the fortunes of the rebound, and Indiana has the ball, a chance to take the lead. Robinson. Alford will fire, and it just won't go. Fifty-nine seconds in the final minute of the first half. A whistle before the shot, and the foul is on Robinson. His second. Let's look. Todd Meyer on the switch out. Stu Robinson gets hung up on a pick inside, and Lewis goes up with a shot. So that shot would have counted if the ball would have gone in. The foul goes against Kip Jones, or to Kip Jones, so he's at the line with a one and one. Interesting play there. That could have been four point play. The referee ruling that the ball was released by Lewis before the foul was committed. Herb Robinson replacing Doug Lee with 51 seconds remaining. Jones, about a 50% shooter. And he hits the first. From Decatur, Indiana, a freshman, 6'7", slated Belmont. Sets and sends the second up and through. And uh, we have an official's timeout with 51 seconds remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. The score, Purdue 34, Indiana 32. Coach, we've been friends a long time, right? Yeah, we sure have been. And have I ever given you any bad advice? Not really bad. Well, then I gotta tell you the way it really is. You'll never make it in commercial TV. You're too sweet a guy, you're too nice. You gotta have that killer instinct like I do. Like you? Yes, like this. Buy the new RCA camcorder. It's a camera and recorder all in one at a great low price. Yeah, Beckley, you're really a killer. You think so? No, I really don't. <laughs> Why shop all over town for a good deal on a used car when Dave McIntyre, Chevrolet and Isuzu Center keeps over 250 clean used cars and trucks in stock. Priced from just $1,500 to $7,500. And most people qualify for GMAC financing with just $240 down. Shop the dealer who sells thousands of clean used cars and trucks. Dave McIntyre, Chevrolet and Isuzu Center, your one-stop used car headquarters. Purdue comes off a win against Wisconsin this last Sunday, 100-73. Indiana with three straight wins, and those are interesting statistics there. Five ties, eight lead changes in this game. Credit Purdue for coming back, too. Indiana had the 24-19 lead, and uh, they battled back, and now they're on top by two, and the Hoosiers probably will work it down, and uh, they got six, 45 seconds on the shot clock, though. It'll be Morgan to bring it up, and Purdue sets itself in the box and one. Gaddis on Alford. Robinson. Now, there are two things that Alford can do. He can either work to try to rub Gaddis off, or he can screen for somebody else, John. He can keep out of the way and let Indiana try to get the ball inside. Looks like now he's trying to post up inside. Robinson, ball fake. Drops it off to Callaway. Two. Galloway's 11th point. Robinson's really kept Indiana in this ball game. He's rebounding the assist. He's only got six points, but he's made a big difference in the ball game. Tie game now, looking at the last shot of the half. Purdue is playing a spread. 
They're trying to open it up for the drive. Now they go into their offense. Five seconds. Off the rim, no good. And before the shot, no basket. And we go into the dressing room at halftime tied up. Wow, you couldn't ask for a more exciting first half, even though the shooting was not that great. Let's take a look at Rick Calloway's last shot. As we tell you, we've come to the end of the final 20 minutes of play, or the first 20 minutes of play, with the score tied at 34. We'll be back to check on individual scoring in just a minute. One hour glasses for $141 or one hour glasses for $55 at Dr. Tavel's Premium Optical. You won't pay $87 more for glasses in one hour. Without Amex coal, practice would be over. It takes coal to produce the electricity that lights basketball courts all the way from backyards to assembly hall. Amex Coal Company. Bet you never thought of us as a basketball power. We like to see you smile. A new day is dawning. Now you're moving in. And we want to be your friend. Hooks likes to see you smile. You can depend on the Mercury Links assembly plant, quality is job one. That's why we've made a special volume purchase of Links so you can drive yours home today with no money down and for a limited time with 7.9 financing. Thanks for building a great car. Thank you, Indiana, for buying our cars. Mercury Links quality. Just call our toll-free number 1-800-826-2880 for more information. There's the score, 34-34. Both teams in the dressing room trying to adjust for the second half. Foul trouble. Melvin McCants has three for Purdue. Daryl Thomas, three for Indiana, a couple with two. Galloway leads both teams in scoring with 12, and it's been the kind of a contest we had expected. Close, hard fought inside. It has been. Uh, neither team shooting as well as they'd like. The rebounding is what's amazing for Indiana. Ten rebounds for Robinson, for Purdue, five for Lee, and five for Arnold. The last couple guys you'd expect to be the leading rebounders. But as I mentioned, the open, Chuck, this is Indiana and Purdue. These players all look forward to this ball game, and even though they're not shooting well, they're still playing hard. They're rebounding. I think we're going to see a great game all the way through. Indiana trying to avenge two losses from last year, and we'll be back to uh, talk with Joe Smith statistically after our halftime feature for you. Tonight's game between Indiana and Purdue being played at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The score at halftime, Purdue and Indiana tied at 34. I opened my IRA for the tax break, but now I want more. I'll only get it from a bank and one that knows how much I need my nest egg. One that offers me a choice of IRA options to help me grow strong and pays high interest that goes even higher as my IRA takes off. I'll only get it from American Fletcher. AFNB. Smarter IRAs for smarter people. I transferred for the IRA advantage. Behind this rugged game of football, there's a lot of sophisticated communications for the teams, the stadiums, and you. I'm Dick Enberg. You know, GTE supplies communications like these for Texas Stadium, the Pro Bowl in Hawaii, Tampa Stadium, and the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. For your quality communications, talk to the telecommunications consultant to Super Bowl XX. Talk to GTE. We respond. For young Wilbur,
Wilbur Shaw, the Shelby County Fair was the event of the year. Good luck, Wilbur. We'll do our best. Great belly. And the annual goat race was the highlight of the fair. From these humble beginnings, Wilbur Shaw went on to win the Indianapolis 500 race three times and distinguish himself as one of the greatest drivers in the history of auto racing. I'm never gonna give ground to anyone again. Hey, you wanna go get an ice cream cone? Yeah. Wilbur Shaw, another Indiana legend brought to you with pride by Farm Bureau Insurance. On this halftime, we'll talk with IU golfer Ramey Bouchard, and our fitness feature concerns a subject that we all hear about, but few of us really understand. One aspect of a physical fitness program is to increase your heart rate. Lynn Schutz, director of the IU Fit program at Bloomington, tells us why increased heart rate is important. Many are just jumping into exercise programs and doing them as intensely as they can and running into problems as a result. And the more you know about your heart rate and how to monitor it, the better off your exercise program is going to be and the safer it's going to be for you. First of all, what you need to determine is what your resting heart rate is. That is your heart rate while you're either lying down or have been sitting for a period of time. You use that heart rate then to determine what your actual exercise or target heart rate is going to be. And there is a formula that you have to determine your target heart rate with. And first of all, you begin with the number 220 which is your maximal or estimated maximal heart rate. What you do then is take the 220, subtract from it your age. And from that, you subtract what you determined your resting heart rate to be. Then add or multiply to that number either 60%, 70%, or 85%, depending on your fitness level. The less fit, the lower the percentage, like 60%. If you've been exercising regularly, three, four, or five days a week, 85% is usually the high end of the percentage that you want to multiply times. Then you get that number, add back to it your resting heart rate, and that will give you what your target heart rate or exercise heart rate should be. Then when you're out exercising, whether it be swimming or biking or whatever, about three or four minutes into your activity, you should stop for a few seconds, take your heart rate in, in your wrist or in your neck, and then you will know whether you're in your target heart rate range or not. We'll be right back with our sports profile in just 30 seconds. With longer days and better weather, you golfers must be anxious to get out the clubs. Ramey Bouchard is on the IU golf team, and he practices indoors during bad weather. He's a junior at IU, majoring in finance. I've always been interested in business, and I've heard business school was real good here. And I'm in there right now, majoring in finance. The athletics has been the second part of my life. I've been concentrating on academics mostly. And that's hurt my golf game a little bit, but I think in the next two years it'll be a little easier to balance my time between academics and athletics. It's always been a dream to, for every golfer, obviously, to make the pro tour, but it's really competitive. So I'd like to rely on my background in finance and my, my education here at IU to get a job in the future. That was Ramey Bouchard of the IU men's golf team. I'm Kit Pio Kruger for IU Halftime. We're still at halftime at Assembly Hall in Bloomington with the score tied 34 all. Let's pause now to hear from our local stations. This is the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. You can make it on your own. Make your house a home. Make old memories shine like new. Wix has all it takes. Wix has all it takes to build most any kitchen you want. 
with almost every style of wood cabinetry, plus our free design service, plus countertops and floors, you can put it all together. Guaranteed. Make special dreams come true, because Wix has all it takes to build all you need. You know why I come to CarQuest Auto Parts stores? This man, the CarQuest qualified counterman. He's got hundreds of thousands of parts, and I can't tell you how often he's helped me out. I can help you charge through winter with a new maintenance-free battery from CarQuest, with enough cranking power to give you sure fire start whenever you need it. I go to CarQuest, because sometimes you need all the help you can get. CarQuest, the right place to buy auto parts. They tell me there's something special about Indiana. I guess you'd call it tradition. People expect hard work, performance. You just got to be willing to be the best. But what people here really seem to appreciate is a good drive. the score and now statistically exactly what we told you about beforehand the official statistics show this game virtually even right down the wire Indiana with a little bit better shooting percentage from the field 14 to 34 but uh, losing to the margin on the line two more free throws for Purdue eight of 11 to six of 11 for Indiana uh, elsewhere John it's it's pretty even 24 23 rebounds and both the fouls teams, even. Yeah, both teams, Chuck, it's the shooting percentage. They're 41 and 38. Uh, well below both teams' shooting average. Uh, the free throws for Indiana has hurt them, as we talked about. The rebounds, turnovers. One turnover for Purdue in the first half. A great job of protecting the ball. But I think the big thing to watch now in this second half is going to be uh, the foul situation. Andre Harris played 12 minutes. Daryl Thomas played 13 and Melvin McCants played nine. So those are all the big players, and the subs are the ones coming off the bench. Uh, the scoring totals also, Todd Mitchell with four points, Lewis with three. They're the two big scorers for Purdue. Uh, Steve Alford only has six points for Indiana. So exact turnaround in what you think the season average coming in here, exact turnaround in the ball game, but still a great game tied at halftime. Joe, as we look down through the history of games that Indiana and Steve Alford have played against Purdue. Um, Alford has not had four good games against Purdue. Not really the last time when they came in here and won by 10 last year, Steve was held to eight points. So they've been able to uh, come in here and play a good D, a good D against Alford. It's interesting to see too that Todd Mitchell's only one of five in the first half in the front line of McCants, Lee, and Mitchell. Of course, McCants got an early foul trouble. They're only four of 14. So we'll see if Purdue takes the ball right off the bat, Chuck offensively and rams it inside. We have some viewers in Dallas, Texas tonight watching us on satellite down there. Uh, former IU cheerleader Captain Jenny Herndon is uh, watching tonight with IU and Purdue alumni in that area. And our hellos to you from cold and wintry Bloomington, Indiana. Scores tied 34-34. Purdue is back on the court. We await Indiana. Stay tuned now for second half action. We'll be right back after these messages. I've always been able to tell the stage my husband's going through by the kind of car he drives. First, it was the anti-establishment phase. Then, <laughs> the family man. Next, climbing the corporate ladder. Lots of different cars, lots of different lifestyles. But every car we've owned has been protected by Farm Bureau Insurance. Hey, baby. What do you think? I think they call this the midlife crisis. Give me a light. Whoa. <laughs> Front light. If you just ask for a light beer. Hey, can I have a light? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Uh, no, a uh, butt light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Opa! Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else Opa! is just a light. Hooks wants to help you stay active and fit for life. That's why Hooks Dependable Drug Stores carry Futuro Elastic Health Supports and Sports Braces. Futuro's full line of support aids provides temporary help with sacro braces, knee and elbow supports, even Futuro's sheer support pantyhose for tired legs. For your active life, look to Hooks. 
for Futuro's complete line of health supports and sports braces. We like to see you smile. Before you go looking for a store and end up going in circles, bank on the Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages to get the tip that are so on target. When you take a shopping trip, you'll be sitting pretty. Right on top of things. So unless you've got money to burn and time to waste, wake up. Before you open the door, open the book. The Ameritech Indiana Bell Yellow Pages. Next to the phone, there's nothing better. Bloomington invites you to break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away. Break away to Bloomington. Some uh, very partisan fans on the far side. Indiana is at home again Saturday, a one o'clock tip off against Illinois. A surprising team, three and three, into tonight's game. And then the Hoosiers go on the road. They will play next Thursday at Iowa and next Saturday night at Minnesota. Both, both of those games can be seen over the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Looking at Bob Knight, 326 wins, 111 losses here at IU. And Gene Cady with just as enviable record. Over six years at Purdue, 118 and 53. Here's Gene Cady with his starting lineup back in the ball game now. Let's see if we can tell any changes in strategies. Indiana also going back with their starting lineup since these coaches have both had a chance in the locker room to go over some things. Number one, they'd like to see their field goal for shooting increase. Indiana 58% on the year. And as we mentioned, uh, just 41 percent here in the first half. Indiana will have the first opportunity to handle the ball starting the second half. Look at that. Purdue opponents held to 43, less than 44 percent for the field. So Purdue's right on that again today. Two percentage points lower for Indiana. Oh, and down hard goes Callaway. We have an injury. I hope not too serious. Tim Garl is out taking a look. That was something that happened so subtly on the far side. Callaway had his legs locked up with a Purdue player, and there was a move made, and Rick went down and down hard. Tim Garl, the Indiana trainer, Coach Knight. There you see Rick Callaway still on the ground. Well, they watch and look very carefully at the knees. That's the danger of... Uh, any form of athletics is the vulnerability of the body and in football and basketball that knee is ever so prominent it's just not made to cut and twist on the way athletes do it and uh, Gene Katie's calling for the Boilermakers to get away but he's back up That's and the Rick's left, left, left knee yeah. Chuck but looks like he's all right he's going off on his own power let's see if uh, Dr. Brad Bomber, there's Joby talking to him. See if uh, he might not be able to come back here in the second half. Gives Gene Cady a chance to talk to his team with that official's timeout. Still looking at there's Joby. And uh, in the blue jacket is Ron Felling, just off your camera side. Indiana now with Winston Morgan replacing Callaway. Alford picked up by Lee. And that's uh, what we thought might happen earlier. Underneath goes Harris up off the glass and good. Rick Harris with his great leaping ability it counts for two for Indiana. 36-34 Hoosiers. Purdue had good success with Gaddis on offer in the first half. Now they switch again. They've got uh, Doug Lee started out with uh, Gaddis guarding Robinson. Purdue trying to knock this game. Doug Lee handling Winston Morgan on him. Gaddis to the right side with Alford playing off. Mitchell to Gaddis. Underneath the McCants, he goes over Thomas and scores. Melvin McCants with his first basket since returning to the lineup. Neither team has their big men in a position where they can really play aggressively. You saw Andre Harris go up against McCants, and now this time down the floor, they go right up against Daryl Thomas. Nobody wants to draw that fourth foul. Alford makes a little fake with the ball as if he's going to start to drive, drops back, squares, and fires. He has eight. 
Looks like both teams have warmed up their shooting also coming out of that locker room. I think you'll see a better shooting percentage by both teams here in the second half. Mitchell to McCants. McCants looking underneath. Back out. Lewis will shoot. And they call a foul on Andre Harris after the shot. That's number three on Harris. Let's look at this again. Good pressure here. You see Lewis going up with the shot. But Cal, uh, Andre Harris comes over and knocks Lewis down. Call that after the shot, so it's a one and one. Indiana not over the limit, out of bounds to Purdue. Purdue with the ball, trailing 38-36. Gaddis as Doug Lee flashes into low post. Gaddis elects to take it across the top of the key. Lob inside to McCants. And that's goaltending. That'll be called on Harris. And they count the basket. Give it to McCants. He has seven. Twice in a row now, McCants has been able to back in on Thomas and get the ball. Here's the Andre Harris touches the ball after it hits the backboard on its way down. Robinson, Alford tries to lean in. Winston Morgan They're trying to free Alford. Thomas tries to set a pick. Lee pretty quick. There's a pick, and there's two points. Credit Andre Harris with a shoulder bump. No call. Indiana 3-3 three three now in the first uh, first couple minutes here of this second half. And again, all for just working off picks, trying to get open with the jump shot. Gaddis. They work medium on the right side, drive, and a score. That's an easy two by Todd Mitchell. <laughs> Purdue loaded the left side low. And a whistle and a foul. It's on Troy Lewis, his second. Indiana bring the ball up quickly this time. Robinson switches over to the left hand. Troy Lewis on the defense. Rick Calloway is back. Phil Robinson steps away, allowing Calloway to get to his seat. And now gives the ball to Morgan to Robinson. A little pushing underneath between McCants and uh, Daryl Thomas, and Thomas gets the better of it, and his eighth point. Both players on the ground that time, no call, and then Daryl tripped over McCants after the shot. Daryl still nursing that left ankle. We can see the bandages on the left. Down goes Lewis, and a turnover. One of the few against Purdue. It's only their second here in the ball game. And a team that likes to run up and down the floor, you usually expect uh, quite a few more. So a good job by Purdue in the turnover department today. 42-40 Indiana, Hoosiers with a chance to build that lead. There are the turnovers. Indiana with a low three. Robinson scores. No foul as Doug Lee took the contact. But Robinson picks up his eighth point. Four field goals. This crowd of 17,259 rallies to Indiana. And two quiets the crowd from Todd Mitchell. Morgan trying to catch the subtle changes defensively. Lewis with the board. Almost throws it away. Lee brings it in. Purdue goes with Gaddis that time on Alford. Steve not able to make the shot. Lee over Morgan, two more. Doug Lee with six, averaging 11-7. There's Rick, bandage, and uh, pack on his left knee. Fifteen thirty-three. Alford down to the baseline and two. Seesaw game again, Chuck. Indiana takes a four-point lead. Purdue comes right back, and now Indiana looking inside to Alford. Both coaches protecting their players. Bob Knight lashing at the officials for contact inside. There's a sort of a pushed up shot by McCants, his ninth. And Gene Kitty likewise for Purdue. Both teams now six out of seven from the field here in the second half, make Indiana seven out of eight. So they uh, the biggest strategy change uh, at the second half of uh, locker room talk was 
come on guys, we gotta shoot better, and both teams got the message from their head coaches. 48-46, Indiana. Lewis over Alford, and Alford called for the foul as he turns to make the block. The box off on the shot by Troy Lewis, and it's going to go as the second foul against Alford. And we have an official's timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. The score, Indiana 48, Purdue 46. It takes a lot of coal to run this company. Coal? This is an office, not a factory. All our machines are electric. And it takes coal to produce that electricity. Never thought of it like that. Coal generates more than half the electricity in the United States. It takes coal to make your computer compute, the typewriter type. In fact, on the average, every American uses three tons of coal each year. Amex Coal Company, powering your world. How did you get way out here? That baby will go anywhere. Got it insured? We've got Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Good. Now, how about life insurance? I can take care of myself. Okay, but life insurance is a good way to protect your family. Wait. Do you hear something? I don't hear anything. Farm Bureau for Auto Insurance, Farm Bureau for Life Insurance. The same agent handles both. Well, it uh, could have been bears. Joe Smith, John was speaking just a moment ago about the Torrid shooting for Indiana and Purdue starting the second half. Torrid, I would say, would be putting it mildly. If we combine them, Chuck, it's 13 of 15 for 87 percent. The Hoosiers have missed only one time, 87, five and eight shots. And boy, look at the shooting for the game now. Indiana goes from 41 to 50 percent and Purdue from 38 at halftime to 46 percent on 19 of 41. That's game shooting. Doug Lee tosses it in far side on the Alford foul. The out of bounds to Purdue. They control with a chance to tie. On a near save, it goes out of bounds. Purdue again. Good pressure. And a near steal by Winston Morgan. Again, it's Lee from Washington, Illinois, a junior, 6'5", to toss it in. And he comes down on the baseline. Troy Lewis. Oh, that's a quick turnaround. And a good shot by Lewis. Lewis has drawn two fouls now by just taking a regular jump shot. He Jumped toward the basket against Alford and got the call just for that timeout. 48-48. Tied at Assembly Hall with 14-14 remaining. Morgan. Oh, boy, you could just read it. You could read it. Andre Harris sort of stepping subtly along the baseline, and Morgan caught him out of the corner of his eye. Well, to make that play look easy, but it's so split timing, split second timing to get that shot. It's only open for a second, and you've got to have the pass in a position so that it's ready. And Chuck, the crowd has come to life on a play like that. Knocked away. Out of bounds, and a foul against Indiana. And Winston Morgan doth protest the call. Hopefully not too much. Loose ball and Winston not able to come up with it. Tips the ball right to Doug Lee. And then the foul against Morgan. Indiana's third team foul of second half. It comes into Lewis. And on the quick inbound, inbounds, there it is again. Lewis just comes to the ball quickly, squares up, and fires. You mentioned he did not score well in the first half. He comes roaring here in the second half. He's a great shooter, as you can see. McCants and Harris having a little knee battle underneath. They try to go inside, whistle, foul. That goes against Purdue. And Todd Mitchell is at whom the fraction was whistled. His third. I think we're going to see that strategy come into play now, Chuck, with the uh, players starting to get their third and fourth fouls. How long can a coach keep him in the ball game? How soon does he have to make that substitution? We're at that point now, 13-20 left in the game. Gaddis really on the back of Alford. Here's Morgan all alone, and it doesn't fall. Morgan gets it back. Off the glass hard as Harris put it up just a little bit too muscle. Too much muscle. Now, tied at 50, and that's no good. Blackout by Indiana. Here's Alford. And that will be goaltending. Count the basket. And 
unofficially for Alford. We have him with 14. Steve decides to go left here to get around Lewis. He does not see Mitchell, but still tries to go up with the shot. And the Mitchell called for goaltending, two points to Indiana. 52-50 Hoosier. Offensive foul, Troy Lewis, his third. Gerald Thomas, really with a gutsy move, set his pick and held his ground. Lewis ran right into him and was called for the foul. Here comes a substitution. Gene Cady going with Everett Stevens. He comes in a ball game for Gaddis, and I think Gene Cady wants time out to talk things over. With 12.42 remaining, we'll tell you you're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. It's Indiana 52, Purdue 50. Buy me, buy me, buy me. Before you buy a business phone system from a stranger, look into Centrex from Indiana Bell. With Centrex, you can stuff each phone with all the features you want. And phones for Centrex can cost you less, too. You can freeze your phone costs for the next 14 years. And it doesn't cost you a ton to tie all your locations together. Centrex can save you a lot. In fact, you can save enough to buy a company car. Investigate Centrex, the business phone system from Indiana Bell. Healthy crops have always grown from this land, but its newest use pretty much turns it into miracle soil. You see, RV Welsh Investments is creating the Meridian Technology Center. These lush 188 acres will offer a business center with drive-in service and storage capabilities, plus multi-floor office space. And throughout the remaining lakes and trees will build to your very specific needs. From this soil, the most miraculous technology park in Indiana, those part of this throng at 17,259. Let's look again about timing on the alley-oop. Morgan on outside. Now, right now, Harris is sliding on that baseline. Here it comes. And then Wince has got to make that pass quickly. Andre's got to time it. Boy, when that play works, there's nothing prettier in basketball, but a lot of times that just doesn't happen. Look at that second half, 73 and 75%. Doug Lee really hustles to get back on Alford. Here's Steve back into Thomas. And that's no good. Forced up by Darrell. Good double team by Purdue that time. Now Purdue with a chance to tie this game. It's 52-50. Indiana. It's been the kind of a game that we have expected all along. Turnover. Well, Indiana gets a break there because Harris was sucked right off his feet by Todd Mitchell. That's the third turnover against Purdue in this half. Indiana with just three. Robinson up to the line. Thomas tries to back in over McCants. It doesn't fall, but the tip in. Give it to Harris. Oh, good inside effort. And uh, we have a dead ball. No foul. It's just a loose ball had gone through the basket and behind into some of the fans. It's 54-50 Indiana. That's the difference Andre could make in the ball game if he can add a few uh, tip-in baskets, get a few rebounds. No turnovers yet for Indiana here as we're uh, 11 minutes and 52 seconds left in the half. Mitchell, and there's a hand on the leg foul called against Indiana. Todd Mitchell's basket is good. He has 10 points. The foul is against... 34, that's Andre Harris, his fourth. And here comes Rick Galloway. Galloway comes in for Daryl Thomas. That foul goes against Andre with four personals now. So, uh... Gene Cady is calling the play. Play number four from the side is Mitchell. Hits the free throw. Makes it a three-point play. He has 11. And it's a one-point Indiana lead. 54-53. Again, Indiana able to pull away that four-point lead. Purdue comes right back with a three-point play. I think we're destined to have a close game all the way today. This is the shot. We have a foul. And that's going against Purdue. The basket uh, was missed by Morgan. And then let's check to see what we have. Interesting play here. Watch Morgan going up. The contact made. He misses the shot. Look at him hanging on the rim there. 
no technical. The referees call that he was trying to prevent an injury to both himself and McCants. McCants is going to come over here, but as Winston leaves, McCants is not yet in position. So the blocking call, and Winston hangs on the rim again to get his balance there. So no call against uh, Winston on the tackle. That's four on McCants. He comes out of the ball game. Jeff Arnold, number 43, comes in. So both teams now with the player with four fouls. Interesting, John. Indiana will have it out of bounds. The, the officials have judged that the, the infraction occurred either before the shot or after the shot. Alford, well, he fell away a little bit. I think he got away with one there, John. Well, just as Troy Lewis has warmed up, Steve Alford also warmed up. His 16th point now, 10 of those here in the second half. Lewis underneath, and Arnold's shot is no good. Right back up is Doug Lee. Indiana mixed, uh, missed the box up. That's what Doug Lee can do. He'll hurt you if you're not in the position to block him out. So I see Katie likes him so well. A sixth rebound of the ball game. Alford again. That one won't fall. Thomas right back up. Misses the shot. Rebound to Mitchell. Now Purdue trailing by one with a chance to lead. Stevens. Lewis misses the shot. Hit, I think he hit the side of the board before the ball got to the basket. Stu Robinson with good pressure that time. Morgan looking for Thomas. Now back to Robinson. And they call the foul on Alford for hooking. Steve Alford. trying to get the inside yep. position on Stevens. He came across a pick and wanted a foul, and this time he gets called as he's backing in to Stevens. Watch the action right here. Good camera angle. Steve's on the low post. He's showing the hand on the right. Bring the ball around. Get it into me. Now he uh, initiates the contact. Foul goes against Alford. We're 10 minutes and 20 seconds away from the end of this game. Mitchell. To Everett Stevens, Arnold, Troy Lewis. He has nine. Troy Lewis with the height advantage, so he takes Robinson inside for that turnaround jump shot. 57 56 Purdue. Alford lays it off. Harris misses the shot. Lewis follows. Purdue with a chance to extend the lead. And a foul. That will be on Winston Morgan, his second. That's the sixth foul against Indiana. And Bob Knight wants timeout with 9.37 remaining in this game. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue leads Indiana 57-56. This fuck's for all that you do. You keep America going. You keep the juices flowing. You are the muscle, the hope and the hustle. You keep the country growing and you make America work. And this fuck's for you. Here's to you, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. I'll never forget the day we moved into our first home. What a day! All we really had was about... a watercolor that we got on our honeymoon. What a fireplace! Well, we've lived in lots of different houses since then, but they've had one thing in common. They've all been protected by a homeowner's policy from Farm Bureau Insurance. Over the fireplace. Oh. <laughs> Actually, they've had two things in common. Well, we're nine and a half minutes and a couple of seconds away from the end of this game, and Purdue taking a 57-56 lead as Indiana picking up a couple of more fouls here in the second half. They have six fouls now, the Hoosiers do, to only four for Purdue. Purdue starting to hit the boards better, Chuck. Nine to five this half, and uh, Lewis has seven rebounds to lead Purdue in rebounding. Doug Lee with six, so they're doing a better job going both boards defensively and offensively. 
It'll be Doug Lee to toss it in in front of his own bench. Winston Morgan to guard the inbounds pass. It comes into Lewis and around to Stevens. Mitchell. And the foul is against Purdue's 43. That's Jeff Arnold, his third. Arnold and Harris in a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder match underneath the basket in the lane. And Arnold called for the foul. Alford tries to set a pick. Now Steve tries to get free, and it comes into Harris. Harris back to Winston Morgan, and Morgan will work it up with the Hoosiers trailing 57-56. Down to the baseline and a foul against Gavis. Believe it or not, that is his first. Or is that Stevens? I'm sorry, that's Stevens, number 21, not 11. His first. Steve's a tough player to guard. Keeps moving around. And defensively, you just get tired. So Purdue's uh, working players in and out on him. It's a tough for Steve also. You get used to beating one player or, or trying to beat one player, they'll bring another player in who plays a different style of defense. It takes a while to get used to it. Both teams on the brink of the one and one. Alford, he connects from outside, his 18th point. Averaging 26.4 in conference play. As we are at the nine minute mark, 58-57 Indiana. Inside, good help by Indiana's Harris, Robinson, and Alton. Daryl Thomas came over to stop that baseline drive, and then Andre Harris dropped in to make the steal. 58-57, Indiana. Baseline, it's blocked, and a foul. And near our cameras is anyone hurt. I hope not. That's almost a no-man's land out there. Our cameraman does such an excellent job of covering the court, and he tried to avoid what was coming at him. Everett Stevens, an excellent shot blocker. He's got 27 blocked shots on the season, which leads the Purdue team. That's nine more than McCants. He's a great leaper, and Steve has not been used to watching. There's our camera. This is the one that gets involved, or close to it. Look at this. And there's a knee. Good work by our floor cameraman on the north end, on the left end of the assembly hall. Here's Steve at the line, fouled during the shot, so he'll have to. Indiana's first free throw attempt here in the second half, so it took eight minutes uh, uh, and 34 seconds to, left on the clock before Indiana's able to go to the line. Steve has 20 points coming into tonight's game. That scored 1,393 points in his career. At IU. Three point lead for Indiana. You got to consider that a big lead in a ball game like this. But this is just the time when Purdue, uh, the two or three times Indiana's got a lead, has come right back with a big play. Mitchell, right through the traffic, brings it on top, looks, gives to Gaddis. He at that last dead ball. Gaddis with Robinson on him to Stevens. Back to Mitchell. Knocked away by Thomas. Good hands. But Purdue recovers off the knee of Morgan as Purdue's ball. Interesting, coaches try to teach that if you're going to fan at the ball, fan up. If you fan up, you stand a good chance of hitting the ball, and even if you do make contact, less a chance of being called for a foul. You avoid that foul. When you slap down, the referee's going to call that against you. You slap up, and you don't get it quite as often. That's off the rim. No good. Tipped out of bounds by Harris. He couldn't control. That was not a percentage shot taken by... Purdue, Herb Robinson, who is normally very reliable, and that uh, didn't have too much of a chance of going from our side. 60-57, Indiana. Robinson trying to look inside. Here's Stevens over Stu Robinson, and Stu gets the ball as again Harris couldn't come down with it. Seven and a half minutes left. Alford trying to work free. It won't fall. Oh, look at the Hoosiers battle for the ball. And they call traveling. Well, you can't find greater action than that. That's right. The fans shouldn't game. boo. Let's look at it again. The fans should not boo. They should praise the hustle of both teams. Winston's coming in for the shot. Now watch the action inside as Purdue has the ball. Andre comes up with the loose now, and Daryl's got it. 
Andre tries for the slam again the loose ball but both teams are fighting for the ball Darrell comes up with it and, and he moved his feet. traveling call he does not have a pivot foot there and and moves around there out of bounds to Purdue oh boy look at that good hustle again but left his man all of the foul and that's going to send 33 Todd Mitchell to the line the basket should count a chance to tie this game Andre goes for the steal here, but that leaves his man wide open. And Daryl Thomas comes over to help a little late. And Mitchell with the big, strong move to the basket. Mitchell is strong. It's four on Thomas, uh, four on Andre Harris. So 7.07 left in the ball game now. Indiana's two big men with four each. Uh, Mitchell from Toledo, Ohio, St. Francis to Sales High. And it gets the roll. He has 14, and we're tied at 60. Alford will bring it up. Works against the zone trap. 60, 60, 653 left. Fox and one again. Gaddis on Alford. Inside. Harris to the baseline. Purdue is crashing the boards well. They're getting help on the ball side as well as away from the ball. And now Purdue with a chance to take the lead. And that foul is against Andre Harris. And with six and a half minutes remaining, the Hoosiers lead. Uh, lose their greatest leaper on the court, their most athletic player. Andre's trying to get through a pick here. Watch number 11. He's coming in to set the pick. Andre's coming off, and he knocks Gaddis down. So that's uh, uh, all for Andre. He did have eight rebounds in the game and one steal. Indiana over the limit. Both teams over the limit. Indiana made has made just one of their last eight shots here in the second half. So they had that three-point lead, and now Purdue sneaks into the lead. Gat is averaging 8.7 on the season, has nine. His first point of the second half, a chance to put Purdue in front by two. At the six and a half minute mark, and he does so. Morgan. Robinson tries to work it through the traffic, succeeds up to Alter. Indiana working for the good shot. See the official under the basket. Keep your arms down inside. Darrell Thomas knocks it at 62. 13 ties in the ball game. 10 lead changes. Chuck, exactly the type of game you expect out of these two ball clubs. Robinson. The bounce, Bill Robinson says, as Thomas really fighting for the ball is cut down on the sidelines by McCann. Thomas way up high now. Good defensive stance that time. Both players going after the ball, and it's ruled out of bounds. Darrell jumps over McCann to avoid contact. Purdue with possession. And we're tied at 62 if you just joined us. Inside, it's McCants up off the glass as he posts. Thomas gets the easy two. It's 16. Darrell's got four fouls, so he's got to let McCants get that ball inside, and then McCants realizes that. Indiana's got to drop somebody back from the guard to help Darrell inside. Morgan in for the ball, and the foul is on Thomas. And we just lost Darrell. Side. That'll be five on Darrell as he's working against McCants. The ball comes loose. Darrell's going for the ball, draws that foul. It'll be Steve Isle. 
the 6'7 sophomore from Hamilton, Ohio, to replace Darrell playing on the Gimpy left ankle, leaves the game with 10 points. Darrell also with six rebounds, Chuck. 64-62 as Melvin McCants. A 69, a six foot nine inch freshman from Chicago Mount Carmel. Steps to the line with a one and one. Average 20.2 points and 11.5 rebounds in class AA ball last year, and he hits the first. Purdue now five out of five here in the second half. Makes them 13 out of 16 for the game, so some early foul shooting problems, but now they've come right back, and that's been the difference in the game. Give Purdue a three-point lead now. Second is on its way, and it's also good. McCants down the stretch, 11 points. It's a 66-62 Purdue lead. Morgan across the line, cross court to Alford. He squares, fire scores. Steve very dangerous when you give him time to set up on that jump shot. A good assist that time. And Steve is playing well here in the second half. Indiana losing a lot of board. It's up, but a foul on Meyer will send Melvin McCants back to the line. I think you can see why McCants was voted the newcomer of the year in this ball game. He's done a good job with Daryl Thomas on him. And now he's got Todd Meyer. He turns. He makes a good, strong move to the basket. Draws the foul. Apparently, some of the fans on the far side of the floor are beginning to show their displeasure vocally. And uh, Bob Knight very, very much upset with uh, some of the decorum here at Assembly Hall. A chance with his 12 point right at his average six foot nine 235 pound freshman out of chicago led his team to the last two-way state championship in illinois a very good player in the high school ranks a turnover against purdue gives them a three-point lead 67 64 but the clock becomes very valuable now to both teams indiana down by three with 4.54 remaining. And Indiana wants a timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The score, Purdue 67, Indiana 64. You know that annoying little buzzer in your car? The one that reminds you to fasten your seatbelt? Well, I've got a fantastic trick for turning it off. All the traffic deaths in Indiana could be prevented if everyone just wore a seatbelt. So, make it click. This message brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance and your Indiana State Police. I know my business. And when that business needs a loan, I need a bank with a strong business profile. One that knows it sometimes takes money to spread your wings. And where I can rely on not just one business specialist, but a whole flock of them. I need American Fletcher. AFNB. The money, the attitude, the team for corporate lending. I took the business advantage. You look at Gene Cady looking for his 119th win at Purdue over six years. And now I look at Indiana going with Isle Meyer, Robinson, Morgan, and Alford. For Purdue, it's going to be Gaddis, Mitchell, 21, uh, uh, 23, Lewis, McCants, and uh, Doug Lee. Off to Alford. Four thirty-seven remaining. Trying to free Steve, comes behind an aisle screen, still can't shoot. Gaddis makes a good adjustment. 19 seconds on the shot clock. Morgan. Tipped away. Contact underneath out of bounds, Purdue. As Isle knocked off his feet, had the best chance probably to chase the ball down for Indiana. With Thomas and Harris out of the ball game. It takes a lot of Indiana's inside offense away, so they do look to Alford to score a lot more. Purdue goes to the box and one with Gaddis on Steve Alford. 
out to Lewis, to Lee. He'll fire. He's deadly from that range and hits again. He has 10. And Purdue has a five-point lead, 69-64. Indiana still disciplined in setting up its offense. Robinson. Now Alford, free in the corner, knocked away, out of bounds, threw Alford's legs. Good defense by Mac Gattis, the senior from Pike High School. Again, a rare turnover for Indiana in the ball game, but credit Gattis with the quick hands. That's the fifth now for each team. The clock definitely working in Purdue's favor. They look underneath, but go to Mitchell on top. Tipped away, but Morgan beats McCanns to the ball. Alford and a foul. And that will send Alford to the line. One thing Indiana may try here with 3.14 left is to beat the Purdue defense down the floor. Try to get the ball in a scoring position before Purdue sets that box in one. They've had good success with it in stopping Alford, so that time Steve takes it just one-on-one -on -one and is able to draw the foul. 3-14 remaining as you look at Gene Cady. Done such an excellent job with these Boilermakers, and now Steve Alford steps to the strike. Scoring credits for this game and a chance to add two more. There's one of them. Been such a, misses that shot. Meyer blocked away, gets the ball right back and brings it out of traffic. Alford wants a screen. Back out to Morgan. Robinson, he's alone. Back up and in by Steve Isle. Gutsy effort there on the rebound. First by Meyer to keep it alive and then Isle with the shot. 69-67. Inside lob. And the foul is against McCants. Alford with the courage of uh, David. Great defense goes against by Indiana. Indiana. That's five on McCants. And Purdue knows they want to go into Melvin without the Indiana big men. Here's the nice lead pass. Alford's in position there, and McCants draws his fifth foul. We have a timeout with 2.37 remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. Purdue 69, Indiana 67. more important to Hooks than your family's good health. That's why our pharmacists in green take their time to keep up with the latest developments in medicine. We like to see you smile. Hi, I'm Dick Enberg for GTE. You know, telecommunications and football have a lot in common. They both involve things like good connections, conference calls, and data communications. And for their communications, more and more NFL teams rely on GTE. Teams like the Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay Bucks, Indianapolis Colts, and Seattle Seahawks. For your quality communications, talk to the telecommunications consultant to Super Bowl XX. Talk to GTE. We respond. 69-67, 2.37 remaining. Alford will be at the line shooting one and one. Well, the rebounding just really tightened up. Now with Indiana coming back after being down by about six boards, and you got to credit Todd Meyer and Steve Isle. Isle on that rebound basket, which has made this one a two-point basketball game, and especially so because you have Harris with eight rebounds and Thomas with six. They're both out of the game the rest of the way out. So Indiana now is 35 rebounds for the ball game. Purdue, 35. Can't get much even than that. Herb Robinson, number 32, checks in for Purdue, replacing McCants. Uh, Alford at the line. Chuck, 2.37 left in the ballgame, and this is the part of the game where each coach is looking for his 
money player to come in there for Indiana. It's probably Steve Alford. You want him to make some big plays. And for Purdue, uh, probably Troy Lewis, maybe the senior Matt Gaddis on an assist. Steve has 24. Early in the second half, Illinois leads Ohio State 37-26. Illinois comes into Assembly Hall this coming Saturday for a 1 o'clock game. We are tied at 69. Purdue with the ball. They set their little weave across the top. Indiana's about eight feet off the play. They'll let the guards play with it out there. They want to protect it low. And here's Lee from outside. That's off the rim. Knocked into the hands of Stu Robinson by Todd Meyer. Todd Meyer with a big play. Not able to get the rebound, but knocks it into Robinson's hands. Purdue staying in the box and one with Gattis just lying, riding herd on Alford all the way. Underneath, Meyer, or Isle, misses the shot. Out of bounds off Isle's legs. Oh, he had the easy one underneath and got it jammed up next to the basket. Let that ball slip out of his hands. He had the easy shot. Ball goes out of bounds to Purdue. 155 left to play. Exactly the kind of game we thought we would have. Mitchell, Robinson looks underneath. Indiana really protecting the low post. Steal by Isle to Alford. Alford drives. Holds up. Baseline. Not enough room. Misses the shot. He wanted to draw the foul, you know. And Purdue defensed it well. Yeah, it's right in front of the Purdue bench. Trying to get some signals from Gene Cady. Troy Lewis back to Doug Lee. Back to Gaddis. Troy Lewis. It's no good to Alford with 47 seconds. Now there are two seconds left on the shot clock. Let's see what Indiana decides to do. They'll bring the ball across the 10 second line. And they're going to play a little keep away. Try to keep that. Uh, Shot clock in play now. What they'll try to do is uh, run this clock down, take a shot with about five seconds. They may call a timeout with about uh, 10 or 15 seconds. Set a play, or they may run it down. And they want it. They want it in a situation where they're able to take the last shot without letting Purdue get another shot here in the ball game. 16 seconds, 12 seconds on the shot clock, 13, 14 on the game clock. Now it's eight seconds, six seconds on the shot clock kick, and it's going to be out of bounds. And uh, it was kicked by Purdue. The clock, the shot clock is ineffective now. Seven seconds left on the game clock. Indiana can play the clock. All right. Here's a chance for Indiana to call timeout. Coach Knight's off the bench. discussing now with the official seven seconds Indiana's got their out of bounds play set let's see what happens they'll deny Alford the ball they're really trapping Alford trying to keep him from coming to the ball it goes to Robinson with five seconds Alford has it he'll fire it's off the rim no good we are in overtime we have come to the end of regulation play with the score tied 69-69 to pick up her overtime period in just a minute. Don't go away. Uh, red-tailed hawk? This belongs to a golden eagle. Oh. Come along, Mr. Porter. Uh, <laughs> In every aspect, the Limberlost was a treacherous swamp. And the terrain beyond it was rugged, filled with every animal and human danger known in the central states. But despite all the obstacles, 
we finally discovered the treasure we've been searching for. Author, photographer, friend of the outdoors, Gene Stratton Porter, another Indiana legend, brought to you with pride by Farm Bureau Insurance. Well, uh, there you see the shot clock and the inbounds pressure. They, they double Alford over here on this side. It has to go to Robinson. And Alford tries to slide underneath the pick. He's doubled over there on that side, and the shot is short. Just sort of a one-on-one -on -one effort. A little shake and bake. You know, Chuck, Purdue had a 69-64 lead with 4.02 to play. Indiana got the last five points. Purdue hasn't scored now going into the overtime in 4.02. Steve Alford wants to balance out this jump circle as we're prepared to start this period. The tip is controlled by Indiana. Isle timed well. That was something that uh, most fans here did not expect him to outjump Todd Mitchell, but outjump he did. Hoosiers want to work the clock, but get the lead. Meyer back to Robinson. Meyer tries to screen for Alford. Robinson, it won't fall. Out of bounds, Purdue. Isle hustles for the ball. Morgan came over for it. Todd Mitchell was there, did not touch the ball. Saw Coach and I talking to Robinson. Catch it and drive. Let's try to get Purdue to come out to help and then dish the ball off to somebody. And a foul. Todd Meyer reaching across the arm of Purdue's Jeff Arnold will send Arnold to the line as Meyer picks up his second foul. The game ended 69-69 with Indiana having the last shot. And we are in the overtime period. 423 remaining. Arnold on the one and one. First is good. Jeff, a 6'10 sophomore from El Toro, California. Misses this one. Morgan for Indiana, and now we're in a situation of lead exchanges. One point, 70-69, Purdue. Purdue staying in that box and one. They've had good success against Indiana with it. Morgan tries to work to the top. Steps right into that box. Alford and gets the move up off the baseline. No good. And uh, fans on the north end of the floor thought that Mitchell might have double dribbled. Bill Herzog said no. 346, time remaining. 70-69, Purdue by one. Mitchell to Gaddis. Now Gaddis around the top. Purdue unbalanced offensively on the left side. That is no good. And a whistle, a foul against Indiana. Will send Doug Lee to the line as Lee, crashing the boards, found that loose ball. He comes from on the outside also. Watch, look at Lee 20. He's coming in from the left. Winston does not turn to check. And Lee sneaks right in for his seventh rebound of the ball game. An excellent job by Doug Lee. Doug Lee. His first trip to the stripe tonight, and he's perfect in Big Ten play. Eight for eight. <laughs> Misses. 318. The clock running, and Bob Knight wants timeout. So with 314 left, we'll have a chance to look at both benches and maybe try to decide what these teams are doing. With 11 minutes left to play, Ohio State has come from a 37-26 deficit to take a 44-43 lead. Well, John, uh, you're very familiar with what happens in the Indiana huddle with about 314 remaining overtime or regulation. And uh, Gene Cady likewise is going to have to try to come up with his offensive and defensive strategies. What would, uh, what would each coach be doing? Well, for Indiana, they've got to come up with some offense without going inside. With Thomas and Harris out of the ball game, they've taken away Indiana's inside game. So they've got to create some offense around the perimeter, obviously looking for 
Steve Alford, uh, Purdue inside. They've lost McCants, uh, but Jeff Arnold coming in there at six foot ten. They don't lose a lot of height. Uh, Doug Lee again is scrapping inside. Uh, look for them to go to Troy Lewis or Todd Mitchell. They're their two big scores. Uh, as we look right into the just the kind of game we expected though Chuck uh, uh, exactly as we planned an overtime ball game uh, right now with the uh, uh, lineups in there Purdue with a little height advantage and both teams of course will be shooting here on any uh, foul situations well we're trying to pick up Joe Smith uh, having a little trouble with his microphone 314 remit 70 69 is the score remaining or uh, the score on the time remaining 314. Chuck, I was just getting ready to mention that uh, we played a minute 46 of overtime. No one's hit a field goal. Purdue only one of three from the free throw line. Indiana setting the inbounds play. They lead Morgan alone. They know that he wants to go as, as much as he can being a point guard to Steve Alford. That's that's who Indiana's trying to free. Uh, Steve is really having his problems underneath with Mac Gaddis. There's a pick. Gaddis again adjusts well. Todd Meyer underneath the aisle. And Alford as Isle tries to hit him. The ball is deflected and picked up by Jeff Arnold. That's a big defensive play for Purdue with 2.38 remaining. The Hoosiers with a chance to take a lead and now Purdue with a chance to build its lead to three. Doug Lee. Stu Robinson with his hands full with Lee at 6'5". seconds on the shot clock they're looking for a mismatch here's Mitchell fall away it's no good rebound Robinson has another big board Alford sort of taking his time got down he's free he scores good pick that time Steve Isle the pass by Robinson Steve a rare chance when he's open with the ball 71-70 Indiana, Lee, Mitchell, Gaddis. Now back to Troy Lewis, the most effective outside shooter. And the foul goes against Purdue. Jeff Arlen, Todd Meyer really mixing it up inside. And that'll be four on Jeff Arnold. Timeout by uh, Purdue. Purdue. Well, it's a uh, it's a must situation with 93 seconds remaining. Uh, but you also remember that a lot of ports can be scored. Now let's watch this. Here's the backing in by Arnold. 43 in the black against 30 in the white, and there you saw Arnold fighting for that position and the call. Joe Smith. Purdue, it's interesting to note, Chuck, they have not scored a field goal since the 402 mark of regulation, so they're 29 seconds without a field goal. We have an opportunity, uh, if you do want to listen, into one of the huddles. This is Gene Katie talking to his Boilermakers. Let's see if we can pick it up. He's trying to set some offensive strategies when they get the ball. A couple of scores for you at the half. It's Iowa 40, Northwestern 22, with nine minutes left in the first half. Minnesota 23, Wisconsin 21. Minnesota pulling the surprise last week, upsetting Michigan to drop Michigan into a tie with Purdue for the conference lead. And Purdue with its hands full tonight, as is Indiana. In this one point battle with a minute 33 left in overtime, the Hoosiers with a 71 70 lead, and Steve Isle stepping to the charity stripe with a one and one. Isle, the sophomore from Hamilton, Ohio, the premier player in Ohio two years ago, not seeing an awful lot of action and having not really sophomore jinx, but just sort of uh, the balance that he needs to get into this. Uh, to get into the system over here at Indiana. This is the first of a one and one. So the Hoosiers with that one point lead. And it's going to stay apparently close right down to that final buzzer. Todd Mitchell. There's Isle. 
Troy Lewis driving on Alford. Lewis fires, misses the shot, the rebound into the hands of Indiana. It's going to be out of bounds, Indiana. Well, the Hoosiers sent four men after the ball. Robinson and Lee really battled for it. And then it was Alford and Isle and Morgan to town on the far side. Lee just always stays after that ball, Chuck. The out of bounds call goes to Indiana. Alford wants him to clear it out, and he'll bring it up against Mac Gaddis. A minute three, minute two, minute one. We are inside the final minute of play. Indiana with the lead, 33 seconds on the shot clock. Now 30. The Hoosiers will try to make this clock work as best they can. And again, John, mentally, I just can foresee they want to get the ball in the hands of either this fellow right now, Stu Robinson, or uh, Steve Alford in a driving situation for a shot. Ideally create a foul situation, but more than that, they have to get a good shot. That's a good shot. And it won't fall. Tipped out and back. Here comes Purdue. A chance to tie in front of their own bench. Isle. Now Indiana puts on pressure, and alone under the basket is Todd Mitchell. 19 seconds. They're going to play for the last shot? No. They're going to call timeout, then play for the last shot. 17 seconds remaining. 71-70, Indiana. How much more suspense could you ask for? Eight minutes and 45 seconds now. Purdue has gone without a field goal. Now, refreshing your memory if somebody just happened to turn on their television set. At the 4.02 mark, Purdue hit a field goal, Chuck, to go up 69 to 64. Indiana then scored the final five points of uh, regulation. It was 69-69 at the end of regulation. Since then, we have had only one of seven shooting on the part of both ball clubs. Purdue's 0 of 3 from the field. Indiana's hit only 1 of 4 from the field. And holding on to a 71-70 lead. 11 lead changes, 14 ties, but 8.45 without a field goal for the Boilermakers. Well, these statistics that will go into the book tonight, although not up to the shooting powers of either team, nonetheless, will express the intensity of this game. Well, a hard-fought game, and that's what both coaches like to see. And now a one-point difference at the 17th second mark. So Purdue's diagram of the play they want to use, and this is what Big Ten basketball is all about. Well, our many, many thanks to our, our cameramen and our technicians tonight for a superbly done game. This is one of those kind of contests where you like to see everything, and uh, our men have done it for you. Our congratulations to each of you. the time remaining as you look at the mentor of the Indiana system in his 15th year 428 and 161 career victories and losses spanning 21 years it'll be Doug Lee to toss it in from just to the left side of the hash mark in front of the Purdue bench and they lob it in it comes to Lewis back to Gaddis 15 seconds Gaddis drives on all from little bump Gaddis lays it up misses the shot the rebound into the hands of Steve Isle. Isle protects the ball, and he's fouled. And now tempers flare a little bit, and immediately, Winston Morgan, Stu Robinson step in there. They do not want any technical fouls. All right, the officials trying to clear the players off the floor. And uh, Doc Bamba is out there. Rick right. Calloway, uh, Daryl Thomas is out there. Watch the action. Here's the rebound. Now Todd's looking for a whistle here, but Purdue backs away. Uh, almost traveled there, and there finally Gary Muncy with the call. Indiana's emotion on the bench almost got a little bit out of control. Now Bill Herzog is talking to Gene Cady. I think Gene Cady wants a technical foul called against Indiana for the bench being on the floor. And uh, what do we have? We don't have an official right. timeout. They want the now, Indiana to come out here. Now, Indiana wants a timeout. Indiana wants a timeout. Now, let's check. We'll watch Gary Muncy as he comes to the bench, uh, the scorer's bench, and he is uh, conferring with the official score. We'll get a shot at this. It will be a one and one. You look at the Indiana huddle. John, I can remember a situation years ago. It was probably 1947 or 48. Indiana is playing Notre Dame. A close game such as this. And uh, I'm trying to think of who the player was for Indiana that was at the that was foul. That had to go to the line to hit two free throws. Uh, 
And the name will occur to me very, very soon. I just can't remember who it is right now. But in the huddle, everything was positive after a timeout had been called. And I believe at that time, Digger Phelps had, had made the call. Wayne Radford was who it was. Wayne had to go to the line. Wayne's only a, you know, he's, he's a freshman, I guess. So it was before 1946, 45, 46. And the atmosphere in the huddle was, now when Wayne hits these free throws, here's what we want to do on defense. I would imagine that same type of optimism is with Indiana now as they break from their huddle. Exactly right. They're lining up their defense when Purdue comes up with this ball, either a missed shot or on the basket. It doesn't matter. What kind of defense are you going to use? And very little time is spent talking to the player who's going to be at the free throw line. There you see the Indiana team lined up. Four seconds left in the game. A one-point lead for Indiana. Indiana has cleared out the lead with the exception of Steve Isle, who will... Take a position on the left side of the basket. He'll match against Doug Lee. So they will leave the free side on the side of Todd Mitchell as Todd Meyer misses the free throw. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Pressure. Indiana have the ball in the victory. There you see Bob Knight leaving the floor. Very happy with a one-point overtime victory. Listen to this crowd for a moment. There's the missed foul shot by Todd Meyer. See the, Watch. the importance of having aisle there is the rebound comes to his side and it takes an extra second or two. Watch the pass there, an extra second or two, and now a trap comes, and Purdue is not able to get the shot away. Alford with a big steal, although time had run out. And the final score, Indiana. Uh, his intensity and his mental preparation, it rubs off on us a lot. And he's 